the development of a mirage, the pretense of a fake world is where our protagonist lives. However, one should open one's eyes and one can immediately see the whole essence of this world. Seeing it for the first time can make you speechless or unconscious. An invasion of monsters? This clearly wasn't a dream, was it? The boy didn't understand why he needed this gift. His perfect scenario of life with his childhood sweetheart, shattered. She clearly lacked tenderness. But it wasn't going to go on like this. Once awake, he embarked on a new and unusual path for his life. But between the extraordinary and the alien, there's a very fine line. It is possible to become different, paying the price and sinking into the abyss. Or you can master the power of shadows and eventually surpass the god himself. At that moment, he decided to punish all the gods and show his blood. One clear day, our protagonist visited the first central hospital. He walked into the first ophthalmology department to see Dr. Zhao. The man looked at the patient's chart and asked the patient to describe the symptoms again. Jiang Yu said that his eyes don't see as clearly. A red streak appears when looking at an object. The doctor asked the guy just how many numbers he sees on that strip. Focusing, Jiang Yu could see the number 18. He asked the doctor is that his age? Did the doctor think about it? How is this even possible? And thought, Jiang Yu surely didn't get the wrong department? If that's his death rate, 18% isn't that much. He looks like an energetic guy. The doctor asked him if he had taken alcohol? Jiang Yu asked, now? The doctor was stunned when he heard this question. The guy apologized and said he was a little distracted. The doctor told the guy he needed to concentrate and decided to examine his eye. The doctor told him to look left and right to examine his eye. But he said the guy looked normal. But when he left the office, he started to see percentages of people. Even his conjunctivitis was cured. And it looked like he had an epiphany. But what about the blood streaks? The guy asked himself. Maybe it would work out, and he'd find a useful use for it. Coming out of the first central hospital, he saw an advertisement saying that in order to ensure the safety of the public, the night watch department was going to open a new recruitment of candidates to patrol the streets. For in the 99th year of the cataclysm, a place of safety has finally been created. The others continue to retreat and hope that they can prevail. The guy thought and accepted that he should have a good look around before returning, but suddenly his shoelace came untied and he stopped. As he tied the shoelace, he began to hear different voices of people, but the bright light was consuming him, and in his eyes he saw that someone was attacking him. But he moved to some strange place for him, from which he was frightened. But with a sideways glance he saw a girl who was fighting monsters. Noticing all the people as they fought against the monsters, Jiang Yu said that it looked like there was a big problem here and one could start to panic. When he opened his eyes he saw different shells in the places of battle, which frightened him, and he closed his eyes. As he followed the road, he could hear people's thoughts and voices again. His world was getting better, and the city safer. The grandpa salesman was asking some guy if he wanted to buy something. He had 50,000 bottles, and he would give it to the guy for 5,000. It made Jiang Yu wonder if his city was safe, or if it was all an elaborate lie. But suddenly he was grabbed by the shoulder by that grandpa salesman. He asked the guy if he wanted to buy some medicine. These drugs are the same as the official ones in pharmacies. Jiang Yu asked for medicine? The city is full of monsters, and he's selling them here. The guy asked him. Does he think he's the god of medicine? The grandpa salesman said no, but he has everything he needs. The guy asked if it was free and laughed. Grandpa got mad and told the guy if he didn't want to buy it, he didn't have to buy it. And there's no place for monsters. Jiang Yu stopped him and said that he was just joking, and asked grandpa if he had any divine oil. He bought a bottle of divine oil and wondered if three grand was too much. Don't blame him if the guy denounces him to the police. But it's really just an ordinary street, the guy said. And yesterday's actions were ill-considered. But suddenly on the bus, the driver said that the next stop was South Street, and that everyone should get ready to get off. But in a moment his eyes turned green and the reflection of his face in the window made him nervous. As he looked around, he realized that yesterday's situation had happened again, and for the second time. And he decided that when he went home to look around, it might happen again. Jiang Yu lived in a neighborhood called Twilight. When he went for a swim, he looked in the mirror and saw the pattern on his chest. He was frightened and wondered where it came from. But when he put his hand on the pattern, he thought he'd seen it before. 
or maybe it was because he'd been hit. But suddenly the pattern began to cover his body with green patterns that made him bend in pain. Taking the water and applying it to the pattern, he felt the pain slowly disappear. But looking in the mirror, he finally realized what it was. But the worst was yet to come. Suddenly he was frightened because he couldn't see his shadow. But the rays of light showed him that it hadn't disappeared. Jian Yu said that he has had so many strange things happen, and he thinks that he wouldn't be surprised to see a shadow missing. When he went into his room he saw a strange monster covered in black. But he wasn't scared and said it would be fun. And he already realized that something amazing was coming. But suddenly his mark started hurting again and burning his body. From the good news he said his shadow is not missing. And from the bad news, it is alive. Jian Yu got used to his shadow and started to test him by telling him to raise his left hand. From the shadow's obedience, the guy was surprised. He found it very interesting and ordered him to perform his public shakedown. But suddenly the guy grabbed his head because it started to buzz. He thought, where did such a creature come from? But his mark began to glow. And suddenly a light flashed, and it was as if the guy had entered another world unknown to him. But it was his characterization of the shadow that he should know. He found it very interesting, which made him smile. The characterization said that his shadow has no consciousness and can't speak either. Jiang Yu read that his shadow had all his memories. He quickly wrote his summer assignment. Holding out a pen to him he was surprised that his shadow could hold a pen. Running his fingers over his head he wondered if he had any other essence. But coming up to him after a minute, the guy asked him why he wasn't writing. Jian Yu got angry and took the paper, saying that the shadow had all his memories, and he would solve this equation in two minutes. But it occurred to the guy to tell the shadow to draw a horse. When the guy saw the result, he thought that he could even write books with it and make money from it. Jian Yu said that his shadow was pretty good at it, and after opening his characteristic, he decided to look at his other abilities. But the guy was interested in the shadow bite line. It said that the guy had to touch the object that the shadow was coming from. The guy looked around and decided to give it a try. But nothing happened, and there wasn't even a manual. He realized that the dark side of the world was a strange place he had seen before. The guy decided to take another look. So he ordered the shadow to stop and started doing some push-ups. As he started push-ups, the shadow began to go underground. Jiang Yu shouted to him that he was talking about push-ups, not quitting. The guy asked his shadow to come out, but suddenly a black mark appeared in the wall, and a black shadow came out from him. Jiang Yu asked him if he was thinking of running away. The shadow wrote to him that he was on the dark side. He wondered what he was doing there. The shadow wrote on the sheet that he was doing push-ups there. Jiang Yu thought that perhaps the shadow's training might be better on the dark side of the world. The guy told him to keep doing push-ups. Suddenly the shadow disappeared again, went to the dark side of the world. Sitting down at the table, the guy said that now it was time to do business. It was already light outside, and our guy slept drooling. He was consumed by strange dreams that included her mom's friend, a fitness trainer, and his classmate Xiaoru. But a friend of his heard strange sounds and opened his eyes. As he stood up from the pain in his back, he thought about how tired he was of this pose. But someone knocked on the door and asked the guy to open it. Jian Yu said that he was coming and there was no need to shout like that. It was still morning. It was Lu Yao Yao, the boy's childhood sweetheart, who was always acting testy. But suddenly he noticed that she was bleeding less for some reason. But he decided to think about it and looked at the calendar and realized that she had those days. Lu told him to hurry up and asked him what the guy was doing yesterday. He was talking about some business and she didn't understand anything, and told the guy to tell me more about it. But the guy shut the door so hard, Lu got scared. Lu told the guy if he didn't want to show it, let him say so, and there's no need to slam the door so hard. But Lu was very surprised to see the guy's back, and she asked the guy if he'd worked out, or was it just her imagination? Jian Yu would rather die than start working out, but how did he get such muscles overnight? Lu asked what he had done. Jian Yu said that he didn't do anything, only did a few exercises, but he seemed to have realized that the result of the shadow exercises were reflected on him. Lu lifted up his shirt and told him he was a cheat, and it was impossible to get that many cubes in just a few exercises. Lu said she saw his father doing some business. She told the guy it wasn't too late to stop. Jian Yu told Lu to shut up. After all, he doesn't do anything like that. 
But suddenly Lu grabbed his arm and twisted it. Jian Yu started shouting and asked her what she was doing. Is she going to use lethal weapons? Lu took the bracelet and put it on his arm. The guy asked her what it was. Lu told him not to move because it was a pollution index device. The pollution index asked the guy. Lu said it shows murders, foreign objects and grudges, and it's all part of the pollution. Lu said that if it's not eliminated in time, the accumulation threatens to degenerate and alienate people. Jian Yu thought that his ability came from the manual on his chest. Would it be useful to them? he wondered, but suddenly there were strange and frightening lines on his body. The guy asked what kind of reaction was that, but suddenly she saw the gun in Lu's hand. And she thought she was gonna shoot him? Jian Yu can't let this happen and let Lu find out. And he needs to prevent it. Lu twirled her pistol in her hands and said it didn't look like anything. Jian Yu said he'd already said that. He asked her if she was going to shoot him. Lu said that her father had taught her to be careful about everything. The guy remembered that he had done some drawings recently, and asked her if she wanted to take a look. Lu told the guy with admiration to hurry up and show her. But the guy asked her to hold something, because it might leak. Lu asked the guy to do things faster, because she couldn't wait any longer. The guy lay down on the couch and said it was close, but luckily he was able to beat her. When he opened his shadow's profile, he saw that it had been training all night. It had been working hard. Jian Yu said that it was very good. After all, he had already felt the result of his training yesterday. But push-ups were not enough, and he suggested increasing the difficulty. The guy told him to do a layup, then a plank, then a one-handed handstand on his index finger. The guy was yelling at the top of his voice what exercises to do. But he didn't know Lu was listening at the door. The girl realized that the guy is really working out, and she had too much imagination. And now she can be calm, because the guy is fine and went to read comics. Jian Yu is 99 years old, and now since January 20th, the first day since the appearance of the shadow. After training the shadow, Jian Yu does not feel any pain, but he is getting stronger. The guy said he's totally satisfied with that. He'll be satisfied with this. Yes, it is already January 21st, the second day, and Jian Yu gave a shadow much more exercise and is satisfied with the result of training on the face. And now the guy should be able to fight Lu Yao with one punch. But no, he hesitated, he should try harder. His uncle Lee came to see him today, he works in the night watch, so he can't let him suspect anything. His uncle Lee is getting old, he was left without an arm, and now the guy thinks he can take out three uncles Lee and Lu in one blow. It's already January 23rd, and the guy decides that he can't go on living like this. In order to gain abilities, he also has to try harder, and he has to train his stamina. Time passed so quickly that he didn't notice, and was always happy that his shadow was training day after day. On January 26th, Jiang Yu decided to exercise too, and he decided to do 10 push-ups that day. After opening the shadow characteristic, he found it strange that the rate of shadow points accumulation was very slow, only 8 accumulations in the whole time. Judging from the current progress, it would be very difficult to gain 10 points for evolution. But maybe the guy can increase his height if he goes to the dark world, he thought. But at that moment, a shadow transported him to a dark world. But it looks exactly like the guy's room. When he went outside, the guy said he made it and finally got out of the room. Jian Yu thought that the dark side could only be accessed by leaving the real world. But he saw that everything was exactly the same as in his world, just darker. But when he looked back, he thought his shadow had come with him. But when he turned around, he saw a monster with sharp teeth. The monster attacked the guy. He tried to fight back and run away, but he couldn't. So he decided to activate the shadow icon. After moving to his world, he fell down and realized that the dark world is very dangerous. The monster scared him to death. Jian Yu asked himself where this monster came from and why it attacked him specifically. But fortunately, the exercise made him much more agile, and he couldn't hurt him. Jian Yu said that no stinker would dare block his entrance. He can't let it go. On January 28th, Jian Yu fought with the entity for the first time, but unfortunately, the guy was very badly injured and lost. On January 29th, at the rematch, the guy failed again, and was hit hard in the chest and almost broke the bones. On January 30th, three bloody marks appeared on his buttocks. Although he had a hard time in the past few days, 
he still managed to recover 6% blood. On January 31st, Jiang Yu decided to regain his strength at home, and Lu came to his aid, saying that she could see that he had been fighting a lot in recent days. Jiang Yu said that she doesn't understand and scars adorn men. Scars on the butt asked Lu and pressed on the wounds. The guy yelled out that he was in pain. Lu said that if the boy is in pain now, his body will get stronger soon. The guy said there's only one month left, and what are Liu's plans? The girl asked a month to what? The guy said a month to exams. During the disaster years, most industries became less popular, including the arts and culture industry. People in the arts have become the bottom of society. No one cares about entertainment and festivities anymore. To become a part of the Night Watch, you must pass a martial arts exam set at the state level. Once you pass the exam, life changes dramatically. Lu said she doesn't really want to be involved. She wants to make music. The guy told her that if she wants to go to school, she can go, but her father might be against it. After all, Uncle Lu is a high-ranking person in the Night Watch, and she is a relatively second-generation official who failed the exams and became a freelancer. Lu said that her father wouldn't agree. The guy asked what then? Lu kept silent and told the guy not to tell anyone about this conversation. The policy has changed. Anyone can apply to take the martial arts exam. Jian Yu asked Lu, didn't she respect her principles before? She will definitely pass the exam after all. Lu said that the pressure on the night watch is always increasing, so they take almost everyone. She thinks she'll pass it. That's what the guy said. But he knew that Lu had a very strong ability. On the day of the exam, there were many different devices used. If there were guns, he would definitely fail it. It's not like I'm sending him to some detention camp. The guy asked Lu if he could use her detector. Lu asked him why he needed it. He can only use it to detect others. If he encounters one, it's best to run away or call emergency services before he's killed by the special ones. Special? The guy asked. Lu said yes. The guy's sicknesses are taken care of, and let the guy come back. The guy said he thinks Lu's family knows a lot about the aliens, doesn't he? Lu told the guy that if he was so interested in special ones, he was planning to take the exam after all. The guy said that Lu had said that this year they would definitely take the martial arts exam, if he had the ability. Lu jumped on him and asked him, really? The guy said sure, especially since he still plans to create some comics about the different and special. Lu was very interested in these words and started pestering him to tell her. The guy regretted that he had spoken at random. The guy said that the original idea was a skinny guy named Aben, who was constantly bullied on campus, but he did not hold a grudge because he had a good heart. And thanks to a kind teacher and auntie, he was chosen by the Night Watch unit to participate in the Super Soldier Project. Aben had amazing willpower, transformed beyond recognition, received a super soldier injection, and became a powerful captain. The Night Watch Division had no plans to send him to the battlefield, sending him to various events to get to know the people of high society. And that was all until the city was invaded by powerful others. Lu invited Jiang Yu to her house. She lived in the same house as the guy. Lu told him to stay here while she went to dad's room. But suddenly the guy saw a book on the couch, and picking it up he read Fateful Emptiness. He asked the girl is it a comic book about brother and sister love? And does she like that? Lu quickly grabbed it from the guy's hands and said that her friend had left it, and she hadn't read the comic. Lu told him to stay in the room and not touch anything, especially her stuff. The guy told her to go. Lying on the couch, the guy said Lu's the same old Lu, can't defend herself at all. And speaking of which, she's been into music since she was a kid. She used to pester her boyfriend to listen to music with her even though he didn't really like it. Jiang Yu turned on the music and fell asleep. Then Lu ran in and asked, Since when did he start liking music? Lu said the guy couldn't stand her. The guy asked her if she found it. Lu took it and threw it at him and said it was all in. When he put on those goggles, he fell into another universe. The guy thought it was Shenzhou. What an impressive virtual reality. Jiang Yu said that Shenzhou is an unknown space, full of unknowns, considered the origin of the cataclysm, and these others appeared here, committed brutal murders, destroyed and gradually absorbed the world. The guy saw the monsters and wondered if they were the ones he saw that day in the hospital. Between their world and the Shenzhou world, there is a space called the Dark World, which is a projection of the real world. As soon as the space was opened, the monsters immediately entered the world through the Dark One. 
Even though the Night Watch now continues to control the gaps, sometimes others still enter their world, and the shadow layer, the guy said, is shed every three months, redisplaying the current picture of the world. And during this period, the others penetrate their world. However, given that the shadow layer significantly weakens the protection of the world, people with ranks below four, it is better not to go out. The range of visibility of the shadow layer is three to five meters, but with the increase in strength of a person, the field of vision expands. The guy said that the shadow layer has a lot of different kinds of pollution. If people stay in it for a long period of time, it is possible that it will become different. The layer of shadows has contamination, the guy thought. Strange, he didn't feel any discomfort when he came here before. But suddenly, a fire monster appeared and tried to attack the guy. Jiang Yu said that in order to deal with the monster, he needed to die in full control of his strength. And by fighting a monster to the death, a guy has one chance to finally be special. The guy saw the creature and said, Kurto, if it is a special one, it looks amazing. The guy wondered if he passed the exam, would he be able to become a special one too? But if you think about it, the special one is a different one with a human body. Controls his power, but at the same time, he dies because of it. Special people constantly struggle with pollution and alienation, and after they die, there is a high probability of becoming different. And that's why the special ones, when they realize that death will soon come for them, try their best to use up the rest of their strength. The guy took off his glasses and was surprised. Lu asked what happened? But the guy said nothing, there was too much information to digest. And Jian Yu asked Lu to stretch it a little bit? Lu got angry and told the guy to do it again? But the guy immediately offered her original paintings, according to the content, she can decide Soma. Lu immediately agreed and said hand in hand. But what's the problem, she asked? The guy said he's always working out and his neck gets stiff. Lu asked the guy, does he pump abs too? The guy immediately said sure and offered to touch her. But suddenly, Lu's father came into the room and was furious to see this. They all went and sat down at the table. The boy and Lu's father looked at each other a lot. Lu told her father that he had misunderstood. Father got angry and asked if he had misunderstood. Did his own eyes deceive him? Lu was confused and got angry at Jian Yu to say something. The guy told Uncle Lu that as punishment, he was willing to drink three glasses. Raising glass after glass, the boy encouraged himself that he could do it. While Lu and his father were surprised, Lu's father got angry and said that the boy had become very impertinent and was looking for a knife. The boy was afraid and told Uncle Lu that he had misunderstood. Uncle Lu never let his daughter get too close to Jian Yu constantly wary of him. Lu's father decided to light a cigarette for peace of mind, but Lu came over and grabbed him because she didn't like it. Lu's father asked the guy what they were doing when he came back and entered the room. Jian Yu said that they were watching information about the different and special ones. Dad looked at the kid so menacingly and laughed and said that's what it is, and decided to talk to him about it. Lu's dad told the kid if he knew why the government doesn't let students know about all this stuff in advance. The kid said he didn't understand at all. Father Lu said that everyone's heart is different. Some people's evil begins to prevail over goodness. Despair can attract people from Shenzhou. And certain things should not be known to everyone. Father Lu said that not everyone has the willpower. If there's a hole in the heart, something else can enter at any time. That's why there are various tests before the exam. And only people with proper physical preparation can get in touch with the world of the others. But it's a very dangerous world. It's a shame that even with today's medical abilities, people still get out of control. Does Lu's father hope the boy understands? Jiang Yu said that he understood everything, but he can't skip this year's martial arts exam. Besides, he's already understood everything long ago, so there's nothing to worry about. Lu's father decided to talk some sense into the kid, but then he got a call. He was told there was an urgent mission about the shadow layer. Lu's father said he understood and decided to go on the operation. He told the guy that he was leaving and that he better not upset him, and then he'd take him to the night watch unit. Jian Yu told Uncle Lu not to worry. He and Lu won't do anything so forbidden. Lu clutched at the guy and said, What's the matter? They've never done anything like this before. Or did the guy say that on purpose, she asked. A guy was walking around his city and saw an advertisement for the night watch, which is always working for their good. The guy was frustrated that he wanted to learn more information, 
but in the end only basic knowledge. Judging from Uncle Lou's reaction said the guy, these materials will be hidden, and he's afraid he won't see them again. But suddenly his phone rang and it was Lou's girl telling him to get a carton of eggs and a carton of milk. The guy said she wanted to ask him for two packs of pads, but she was too shy. With a month left until graduation, the effects of shadow training are gradually fading. Sounds like the guy said shadow training isn't enough, he needs to add in the real thing. And lately, the guy has noticed that the propaganda about fighting the others has increased. And more people have signed up for the martial arts exam. But suddenly everything went dark and the clouds turned black. The guy said he felt as if something terrible was about to happen. But he calmed down and said he had too much on his mind and needed to stretch himself a bit. Jiang Yu was walking calmly home and suddenly he felt a dark force and was thrown into the dark world. A very bad man was waiting for him there. The guy recognized him and said he thought he lived in the same building as him and asked him why he was here. But this bad man kept approaching the guy. And this moment he crashed in front of Jiang Yu's legs. But it wasn't all for nothing. And at this moment, an old familiar enemy of Jian Yu appeared behind the back of the murdered man. The guy was walking home and said that he was terribly tired, because lately the night watch has been getting more and more work. When he was a civilian, he thought it was an honorable job, but he worked overtime all the time. If he had known before, he wouldn't have taken the exam, but in front of him appeared a black funnel, which grabbed the children and tried to drown them. These little creatures were crying and asked the guy to help them. When the guy saw this, he said that the other had decided to drag people into the dark world. He was thinking that the other had sneaked into their world to harm people, but he had never seen people being dragged to the dark side in such a public way. The guy jumped after the kids without thinking. Grabbing a kid's hand, he couldn't help himself and was pulled in with them too. After moving into the dark world, the guy realized that things were bad. He had never even had a weapon with him, so he was going to die here, he thought. But this case was sensed by the monsters in the dark world, and the red monster decided to attack them. But the guy tried to fight back. When he calmed down, he saw that the breach had disappeared, so there was no way for them to get back in. He realized that in this world he was surrounded only by others who could attack them at any moment. In addition, he said that he had spent most of his time interacting with citizens and had already lost all of his fighting skills. But the worst part, he said, were the helpless children, who cried untimely and begged to see their mother. The guy said he had no choice but to send a distress signal and wait for rescue. The guy went to the children and asked them not to cry and gave them his watch, which could help them temporarily withstand the pollution here. And as soon as he thought of something, he would take them home. The guy thought the watch wouldn't help him much, so he decided to give it to his kids. As for their survival, it's all up to fate. The kids asked the guy if he'd really take them home. The guy told them yes, and told them to always be there for them. The guy said he'd just take care of a little problem, and it'd be over in a jiffy. The guy said that when he was 18, he passed the martial arts exam and enrolled in the martial arts department of the department's university. From the very beginning, he worked hard, laying a solid foundation, waiting to become a full-fledged fighter. In his second year, he won first place in the alien combat exam. But that wasn't enough. He believed in fate. But no matter how hard he tried, he still couldn't overcome the barrier and go over his limit. In the end, all he had to do was switch from the martial arts department to the humanities department to become a regular civilian member of the Night Watch. The guy who saw the monster said that it has a half-human form and moves on all fours, and he thinks it's a mid-level monster. But the monster pretended to disappear and attacked the guy stealthily. But it was not enough, because the guy was able to react and strike. The guy said he's doing great. His friends are starting to come back. But the monster was not so weak, and gave a strong blow to the guy. From which he was very surprised. The guy wanted to dodge the monster's blow, but his body was slower than his mind, and he didn't calculate a bit. With each attack, the guy said that his body was getting heavier, it seemed like numerous needles were piercing his body. But every time he ran away, the guy decided he had to end it and do something about it. Taking all his spirit and strength into his hands, he managed to attack the monster with his shadow-blinding power. With such a mightily strong blow, the monster didn't expect such a thing from a guy and screamed in pain. The guy saw and said that pollution is increasing. Whenever the monster uses his skills, pollution increases. Unskilled people like this guy can't use their abilities repeatedly. Luckily, since he became a civilian, 
He hadn't used his abilities that often, so the contamination was at a low level. The guy said that if he didn't take the risk now, there might not be a future. But when he faced the monster, he was defeated. The guy was very angry that the monster was able to adapt to his skills so quickly. He had an average level. Any martial arts student would be able to deal with the monster in no time. But it's not easy for him because of the difference in talents. He can't win, he said, but he can't give up. The only thing the guy said he could do was stall. Wait for the other members of the Night Watch to show up. But his death was not far off, and the monster ran its claws across his chest, and the guy fell. Looking down at the monster, he said he was dying. And when he was fifteen... His whole family was killed by the others, and so the guy at 18 decided to take a martial arts test. And at 20, he was expelled from his sophomore year. At 21, he joined the Night Watch unit as a civilian, for years since then. This is his life. It may not seem easy, but for this world it's the norm. For years of fighting against the others, they have never lived in peace. But sometimes even the others have retreated. However, once the clouds cover the sun people can no longer see hope. The guy said death is normal in their world. But before he dies, he has to do something. Rising to his feet, the guy regained his strength and decided on character to start the second round. After attacking the monster, the guy managed to make a few attacks, which shook the monster a bit. With each blow to the monster's head, the guy realized that he needed to put in even more effort to defeat it. But in a moment, the monster vanished, and the guy's fists remained frozen. But a second later, the monster reappeared and struck the guy. Lying on the ground, the guy said he couldn't see anything, and yet his skills weren't enough. He couldn't even win with the pills. He decided he was weak. And that was the end of his ordinary and boring life. But suddenly the guy noticed Jiang Yu asking what's going on in the world. He thought that this guy was from the Night Watch. But no, his voice was too young, and his manner of speech was not the same. He assumed that Jiang Yu was special. But then he remembered that they don't come here. Jian Yu took the guy by the shoulder and told him to rest, otherwise he can rely on him. Besides, the entrance and exit of the dark side is tightly controlled. No random person can get in here, said the guy. Unless he's part of the mysterious forces residing on the dark side, said the guy. In front of his eyes, Jian Yu received a strong punch on his face. When the guy saw this, he said that Jian Yu was very weak, but he couldn't help himself and slapped the monster saying that his opponent was him. But Jian Yu found a bottle of soy sauce and decided to stab the monster, dodging the blow he stabbed it. Jian Yu told the monster that it was useless to do anything, since he had already figured out his scheme. The monster is seriously injured, so his speed and strength leave him waiting for the best. And Jian Yu has the advantage. After seeing Jian Yu fight, the guy thought about it and said, Is he really weak? Apparently there are no rules in this battle and he inexplicably suppresses his opponent. Jian Yu told the monster that he had kicked his ass a few days ago, and now it was his turn. But the monster's strength did not wane, and seeing Jian Yu attacking him, he slashed at him with his tail. Standing up on his feet, Jian Yu said that it was wrong to attack the same place. But the monster was heading towards the children, and Jian Yu thought about what he should do to prevent it. If he was alone, he could just escape the dark side and go home to lick his wounds. But Jian Yu said that the guys would die, and that was not his plan. But he saw that the monster had 20% blood left, so what was the point of being afraid of it, he thought. He decided that today he would finish the job. The guy told Jian Yu that the monster had a serious injury in his right rib, so let him attack there. Jian Yu heard this and immediately moved into action pulling off a few deceptive moves and opening up the monster's defense to strike at its weak point. But the monster was still alive and Jiang Yu thought it was running away, but he saw it heading towards the children. The boy shouted that the monster wanted to get the children's blood. At the moment of the bite, Jiang Yu told him to stop. He threw the energy can at him, but the guy managed to sneak attack him and gave him a devastating blow. But the monster was smarter and sucked the guy's blood. He saw the monster's blood getting bigger and bigger. Jian Yu grabbed the monster by the hair and bit it, reducing its blood by 2%. Tearing it into pieces, Jian Yu said that it was like a toddler and barked like a dog. Jian Yu asked him, did he want to taste human flesh? If he wanted to taste human meat, let him take the risk. But the guy was very angry and gave him a crushing blow. With a touching blow, 
The monster was torn into tiny pieces and the monster exploded. With his face covered in blood, Jiang Yu finally took revenge on him. But suddenly his eyes began to darken as if he was losing consciousness. When he traveled back in time, he saw how his city had changed. It was on fire and in a sea of corpses, but he saw that it wasn't so clean. He noticed that he was surrounded by an army of aliens who all attacked him and devoured him. The sun has disappeared, the dark side has enveloped the world, hope has been lost. Some fight in silence, die and it's common, and some understand and some don't. But suddenly he heard a strange voice telling him to wake up and get up. And holding him back, was he alive? When Jiang Yu opened his eyes, he said he was alive and realized he was just having a bad dream. But in his mind, Jiang Yu felt that after killing another, his memories were cut off. The guy asked him if he was okay? And why didn't he say anything? Jiang Yu came to his senses and said he was here. After seeing the guy's level, Jiang Yu said that he was in a serious condition and had lost a lot of blood, but he could still stand on his feet, and it was amazing. The guy asked Jiang Yu to sit near the wall. The guy asked him if he was a member of the watch. Jiang Yu realized in his head that the guy didn't recognize him, even if they live in the same house. And it seems he can't see well, so it's normal that he didn't recognize him. Jiang Yu told him, No. The guy looked at him and replied that it couldn't be. The other was very strong, and the guy doesn't believe that Jiang Yu isn't a member of the night watch. Jiang Yu smiled and resented in his head for this communication like this. After all, he had just saved him. The guy said it's funny because Jiang Yu is so strong. Soy sauce hit the other guy. It's very clever. Jiang Yu asked the guy if he was alright. Even in this state of laughing, the people from the night watch are amazing. The guy asked Jiang Yu what university he was in and what course he was in. Jiang Yu replied that he was a sophomore at Beidou. He realized that it was better that the guy didn't recognize him so he didn't need to tell him the truth. The guy was surprised that the guy came out even younger than him. He asked him what his specialty was. Jiang Yu was already getting angry at his curiosity. The guy said it might be martial arts, because Jiang Yu is too strong for the humanities. A guy asked Jiang Yu if he had a cigarette. He said he only had bikes. The guy said that it was somehow not enough he gave him. Jiang Yu said that he had originally bought a lot, but during the battle, Everyone had broken. The guy asked him if this was the first time he had single-handedly killed someone else. Jiang Yu said he thought it was the first time. The guy sighed and said that he always admires them. Martial arts. Martial arts and all that kind of stuff. It's all so exciting. Unlike Jiang Yu, he has a lower skill level, and his attack power is a bit weaker. In a word, he is hopeless. Even his long-range vision, which seemed to improve his combat efficiency, is not even a little bit of help. Jiang Yu said that he thought the guy needed to talk as little as possible to conserve energy until backup arrived. The guy said that it was fine, he just wanted to talk to someone. The guy said it's not every day a civilian gets a chance to fight the others. But anyway, the guy said, he's terribly weak. After all, he can't even withstand a wave of pollution. Jiang Yu asked him if he regretted everything. Since he chose the humanities major, how could a civilian get to the dark side? asked Jiang Yu. Sorry, asked the guy, and said it was his choice. He's a civilian, goes to work every day, talks to girls, works on the night watch. Isn't it a good life? he asked. The guy said he switched to this specialty because he was kicked out of martial arts. He seemed to be doing great, but he doesn't like anything. But suddenly the guy started coughing. Jiang Yu told him to calm down. Otherwise it would be hard for him later. The guy said he's been signaling for help for a while now. He thinks the rescue team will be here soon. The guy said that he was relieved and thought it was time for him to go. He told Jiang Yu not to walk around in case he ran into another one. After all, his ability wasn't enough to fight several others at once. Jiang Yu suggested that he talk a little more before the rescue team arrives. Jiang Yu knew that he had to leave quickly. In his head, he told him to give him a break because he was already tired of his chatter. The guy decided to tell Jiang Yu, when he used to be brave and tough and not afraid of anything. He told Jiang Yu when he went to the university again to take something to Director Zhou with the specialty of extraordinary technology. It could be said that his teachings were not particularly fruitful, and even a different first rank could be extremely strong. He also told Jiang Yu to thank Principal Huang from the Cultural Department to tell him that her teaching was top-notch and once she was advised not to be so gullible, 
Once a bad joke was made, she immediately believed it. Then she was embarrassed to death. Jiang Yu said to the guy, Can he take the notebook? Or let him come and tell these people everything himself. Guy said he'd been carrying this around for a long time. Wanted to find someone to talk to. It would be good for Bai to come back to the academy, the guy said. And asked the guy if he had any more wands. And he asked for a couple. Jiang Yu smiled and said that he liked them. The guy said that it looked like the night watch had arrived. Jiang Yu was glad that they had finally come to help him. So he took his bag and headed home. The guy asked him if he would go with him. Jiang Yu refused him and said that he would get there on his own. Moving to his world, Jiang Yu noticed that the men of the watch had come and found the boy and the children. Checking the guy's pulse they didn't feel it. Jiang Yu was surprised and noticed that the guy's blood level was giving. Jiang Yu didn't understand. He could be helped with their technology. But his life wasn't saved and the night watch saluted him. The guy tried to stay in that world, but he couldn't. He woke up in his own world and heard people laughing at him. The man from Nightwatch said the special ones should remember. You can't give up even at the last minute of your life. When the special ones realize that the chances of survival are slim, let them take this pill with care and caution. They must all remember all the fallen, move forward boldly until all others are destroyed. They have to watch over the earth and sky, let them patrol day and night, and let them think of a happy future. The mortals have to watch inexplicable things. Moreover, confront them. After all, they are all night watch. Going up to his house, he couldn't believe that guy was dead. He was always joking around while he was talking. No flowers, no applause. He passed away quietly, just like a normal person, no matter how ordinary he was. Jian Yu will never forget him. He said he was tired and went to bed. Jian Yu looked in the mirror and said that he could hardly walk, but he still had half of his blood. He thought he had 20% left, and that guy had 10, and probably told Jiang Yu that he could still be helped. After opening the refrigerator and removing the extra food, Jiang Yu said that it seems that training your body is not enough. Willpower is also very important, but suddenly Lu showed up and said the guy wasn't answering his phone, and no one was home. Did he go to the hen house for eggs? The guy smiled and said that New Year's Eve is coming soon. The queues are huge, you can wait half a day. And he was surprised and asked her how she got the keys to his house. Lou said he doesn't cook or order his own food, so Uncle Lee asked her to take care of him. The girl was very threatening when she saw him and asked him what happened to him. Did he fight? The guy said it's late and she should go home. Otherwise Uncle Lou will get it wrong again. Lou told him to turn around, but the guy was stubborn and said he was hungry and wanted a bun, grabbing the guy's arm. She saw his deep wounds and asked, how did he get hurt like that? The guy threw up his hand and said he forgot to buy eggs. Lou told him to come back and not leave. Let him answer first. The guy said he was attacked and robbed on his way home. But then he caught up with the guy and beat him up. So there's no need to feel sorry for him. When the police arrived, it was hard to recognize the attacker as a human being. The guy thinks Lou can't even imagine how good his reactions are. Left uppercut then right, up and down combo. He thinks even the mugger's mother wouldn't recognize him. But suddenly Lou moved closer to the guy and touched his face. The guy got excited when he saw her eyes. But in his head he knew it was a bad idea to tell her that. She'd never believe such nonsense. Lou asked the guy if his wounds hurt. Jiang Yu said no, he just wanted to sleep. Lou said that this whole situation should be told to Uncle Lee. It's not right to fight at night, the guy said it wasn't a fight. He was just standing up for himself. He asked Lou to come back. But the girl was so stubborn, she said she couldn't be convinced. The guy fell down and said he was too weak and couldn't go on. Lou immediately asked the guy if he was okay. Lou said she thought the guy needed to go to the hospital. Jian Yu told her not to worry, because the medicine at home was better than any hospital. Lou looked at him menacingly and asked if he thought she'd give him medicine. The guy asked Dr. Lu to fix him up. Lu took over his treatment, and wrapped him in bandages. The boy screamed in pain, but he was patient, and didn't show his weakness. The guy started to resent it because he just gave permission to give the medicine, not turn him into a mummy. Lu asked him if he'd do it again. The guy said no, it won't happen again. Lu ordered him to swear. Showing his tongue, the guy denied it and said he wouldn't do it. The guy told her to realize it's in their nature. They can't live without fighting. Lou insisted and asked him to repeat what he said. 
The guy said he was just going to watch, and he wasn't going to fight. Lou got up and said she was leaving. The guy was surprised and asked if she wanted to stay. He had a big bed, and Lou took the door and slammed it shut. While trying to sleep, Jiang Yu remembered that the guy had asked him to send a message to Beta. But suddenly, Jiang Yu stood up abruptly and jumped off the couch, remembering that this guy didn't even give his name. Jiang Yu wondered, would his first killed other be displayed somewhere? Or would he be consumed with a shadow bite before the kill registered? After opening the shadow's characterization, he decided to first look at the skills he had learned. He began to train the insidious strike, but it didn't go according to plan. And he said the system messed up. But he thought it might be because there was no target of attack. Sitting down on the couch, he said he'd try again later. He began to learn more and more about his abilities. But the indignities were ahead. Why couldn't they write in plain language on the menu? And why only in the dark is it effective? What in the light then to do he thought? He was told that his shadow had undergone a drastic change so he could now fully control it and merge with it. But suddenly he saw a new skill called Shadow Form. He thought it was a miraculous ability that was written under the fourth item. It was said that if he was seriously injured, his blood volume would be delayed to slow the approach of death. He only got angry after seeing this ability when his blood volume dropped by 99%. He'd rather die happy, said Jiang Yu, but he accepted that it was a good ability anyway. So he decided to put it to the test and ordered the shadows to come out. The shadow came out and stood in front of him, touching each other with their fingers they joined together as one. After making a few movements around the room, everything flew around. The guy was surprised from his speed. Taking a sledgehammer with a weight of 100 kilograms, it hit him in the face and used defense. But nothing happened to him, and he said that we can't win. But suddenly he heard the neighbors shouting for him to calm down. The guy said that he is not conspicuous in the eye but also well justified, the shape of the shadow is something. In the menu he saw a section of the human stalker, which can be opened. Opening it he learned that he has part of the abilities of this skill. But a window popped up saying that sometimes risks can turn into opportunities. But the guy decided to try and open it. He saw that the system marked the word risks in red, but maybe it's better to refuse, he thought. But the word risks can turn into opportunities did not get out of his head, but his thoughts were inclined to answer yes. Before he knew it, he was being swallowed up by the shadows, because he hadn't quite made up his mind yet. Menu told him that if he doesn't take risks, he'll die. He's a born killer whose attacks will always do damage. The guy realized that even a god could be damaged. After activating the shadow form, his killing ability would be greatly increased and the need for a certain balance of blood volume would be reduced. And when the victim's blood volume reaches a certain limit, the band above his head will turn scarlet, and he will be able to observe the gradual death of the victim. And when attacking, he can activate the decapitation skill, which depends on the blood level, strength, ability and other factors of both sides. Decapitation became very interesting to the guy. He thought maybe this was the skill that activated last time? When he killed someone else, the skill of absolute damage and decapitation gives the guy hope that he is invincible. When he took off the bandages he saw something impossible. His wounds were gone, and it seemed to him that everything was gone. Looking at his arm he saw that even his deepest wound had disappeared. Medicine doesn't work that fast, he thought. But he realized why this happened. It was because he had activated the shadow form and the power of recovery really amazed him. The girl said that yesterday Jiang Yu said that he met a merchant and fought with him, except that he had a watermelon cutting knife with him. The boy said that he was injured, so should we visit him? Lu told the guys not to listen to him, the dog chased him. The guy asked in surprise, really? Lu said that Jiang Yu was a fool for bragging. So they went to Jiang Yu's house, Lu pulled out the key and tried to open the door. The girl asked her where she got the key from. Lu smiled and said that Jiang Yu's uncle had given it to her. When she opened the door, she asked Jiang Yu if he was home. The guys came to visit him, but Jiang Yu was stiff with pain and said that this was some carelessness. He didn't even think that the wound might open. Lu asked him if he was okay. When she saw his open wound, she went to help him. The boy said he thought the wound was healed, so he took off the bandages. The girl said to her friend with surprised eyes, it seems like Jiang Yu wasn't lying about being hurt. They quickly decided to help him. The guy asked him when he got so pumped up. 
Now he can see why he went to fight the merchant. Lou picked them up and said enough was enough and walked them into the living room. The boys told her they understood and don't let her push. Lu started to treat his wounds, but Jiang Yu screamed in pain. Lu got angry and told him to stop, because she already knows this ointment. It doesn't hurt at all. When he saw Lu's feet, he froze and smiled. Lu said she thought he needed a good treatment for his wound. Lu told him that he fights too much, so she asked Shao Kun to give him medicine. Jiang Yu said no, because this guy is stupid and clumsy. It will only make things worse. Lu grabbed him by the cheek and told him that Uncle Lee wasn't on him. Lu asked what the guy did yesterday. She told him not to brag and make up stuff. The guy said it was just a chivalrous act of justice. Lu said he's lying again. The guy didn't know what to tell her. Run into the shadow lair, kill someone else and then come back? Would she believe that? Jian Yu asked Lu what time her father came back yesterday. The girl said he didn't come back and asked why he was curious. The guy said he thinks the night watch is tough. Daytime work, extra hours in the evening, it's dangerous. When he saw the girl's face, he realized that Lu Yao was very worried about her only father. Most of the night watch staff put their lives in danger on a daily basis. Uncle Lee was left without an arm. Lin Mo died at the age of 20-something. Even a strong man like Uncle Lu had been seriously injured, which had fundamentally affected his stamina. He wouldn't be able to advance any further. Lu asked the guy, if he passed the martial arts exam, would he get a job on the night watch? The guy thought about the answer for a long time, because even he didn't know whether he would go or not, so he told her he didn't know and asked her if there were any hotties there. Lu got very angry and even blushed and told the guy to shut his mouth. Jiang Yu told Lu to relax and asked if there's such a thing. Lu jumped on him again and decided to show him, while their friends heard it all from the other side of the door. The boy asked the girl what was going on in there. Jian Yu asked the guys why they came. The guy said that they heard yesterday that he was having a hard time, so they decided to pay him a visit. The guys saw Jian Yu's wounds and thought they were hickeys. Lu Yao is so energetic they thought. Jian Yu told them not to worry. He would live and invited them to sit on the couch. He said that the guys didn't know anything yet and started to tell them that he had gone to buy soy sauce. As he was walking out, a big man with a bag in his hands passed him. Lu got mad and said he was at it again. Lu told Jian Yu that she would go to the store, throw away his shirt. It's torn anyway. Jian Yu didn't even turn around and told her to throw it away. He went on to say that eighty other big men ran out of the forest. One of them had a big knife that he used and suddenly he remembered something. When he turned around and saw that Lu hadn't left yet, he stood up abruptly and said that he had one thing left in his shirt. And the moment he took the shirt, they served him and he didn't have time. Lu started laughing and asked him why he needed them. Jian Yu asked Lu, didn't she have a stomach ache yesterday? He wanted to give it to her when he got home from the store and make her feel good. Jian Yu picked them up and told her to take them, in case of anything. Let her not be shy and speak up straight. Lu got angry and made a ball of pads, which she threw at Jian Yu and said she shouldn't have. Jian Yu said that she was angry, so why yell at him like that? Her friends said that they would go too, and wished them good luck. Jian Yu was happy that now everyone was gone, no one would bother him. He began to make the shadow icon, and by shifting into shadow form he became half human, and they decided to start by training. Jian Yu felt strange in the room. There should be a lot of pollution, but somehow it only felt comfortable. He felt as if he had been living in a polluted environment for a long time, and then suddenly found himself in a vast and clean space. The guy said it's not bad, his stomach doesn't hurt, and the volume of blood in his body has increased. He decided to start his training with the shadow. When he looked around he saw that the room was covered with inexhaustible energy. But suddenly came the message of turning on the shadow form, there was a perfect entry into the shadow layer. He feels his body's energy being completely released, and he becomes free. He tried practicing. During the training, the shadow bite is activated, which only absorbs the darkness from the shadow layer. The physical condition is greatly strengthened. But to him it often began to fall out that the physical state is strengthened during exercise. And he said he realized that there are about 1,000 ways to strengthen. Jian Yu said that there was too little space here so he decided to train outside. He said that since he was so capable in this world, shouldn't he be worshipped by everyone? After a long time of thinking about what to do, he took up the tourniquet 
and decided that he would become a champion of the tourniquet. Strangers came to the Night Watch apartment headquarters and broke into the interview room. The chief said that according to reports, the disturbance in the shadow layer has increased in frequency, and is currently unpredictable. The level of pollution has increased dramatically, spreading over large areas. The main said, the third, seventh and second squads have found gaps in the northern, southern and eastern districts. The woman said that it will not be easy, judging from the map of the distribution of the front lines, the pollution covers mostly residential areas, and not randomly, as it was before. The chief realizes that the others have been appearing much more frequently lately. In the past two days, there have been four incidents of people being dragged into the shadow layer. They may think it's extremely small, but no one knows when they will attack next. Compared to the shadow layer anomaly, the breaches are much more dangerous. If you compare a shadow layer anomaly to a ferocious beast, it feels as if a Godzilla has launched its attack. The head told his subordinates not to be discouraged. It's just a suspicion. Don't act like they've already lost. Besides, aren't they ready for battle? Headley asked. Everyone looked at the head and said nothing. Headley told the guy to keep talking. And he said it was time to move on to the recently suspended. The unknown man stood in the headquarters and looked out the window, pulling out a pack of cigarettes. He was punishing himself for the fact that just before the new year he was so screwed up. When he took a cigarette in his teeth, he was surprised because someone had switched cigarettes for cookies again. Suddenly, Headley threw him a pack of cigarettes. Lee asked him what happened to his face. You want some too? The man told him to forget it, and threw the pack of cigarettes back saying he was afraid of lung cancer. Are you afraid of that? Lee asked him and laughed. The man told him not to talk nonsense, and asked him what he had left him for. Headley smoked a cigarette, and said that something else came from above. The man was surprised and asked what came. Also urgent, the man said and asked if there was any confirmation of the information. Chiefly told him to check the laptop. Headley asked the man what direction her daughter would take. Humanities or martial arts? Lou's father said that they haven't thought about it yet, but they have to wait for the results first. When he opened his laptop, he saw a notification that said, The special ones who have second or higher rank are asked to apply for admission, but first they need to pass the exam. Commander Lou said, What's all this about him? What about Headley? Commander Lu said he doesn't think he's honest about his abilities. And in general, does he stand out at all? Commander Lu asked if he wanted to send him to learn special humanities. Chiefly said no, and told him to let him learn ordinary crafts. Commander Lu asked Headley, he's joking, he hasn't even passed the test yet. What if he passes it brilliantly? He knows that it's compulsory to enter the special faculty. Chiefly put out his cigarette, and said he'd take a look. Commander Lu told him to be clearer. Headley told him to perform his duties with the utmost care. Suddenly a girl came in and said she apologized for disturbing them. Commander Lu told the girl to tell him what happened. The girl said that she had just received a message from the shadow layer. The message was about new aliens who have superpowers. And a description of them. The girl said that the observers had discovered a strange alien. There was no record of him in the database so she wanted to ask the commander. Commander Lu was very angry, because he was surprised to see the description of this other one. In the shadow layer, the guy saw the spider again. It contains a lot of protein, which is several times more than the same rice. And the spider meat said the guy, very juicy and delicious. After cauterization, the hair is easily removed. Tried to catch it right away, that spider meat is like no other. He was surprised that so many people appreciated the shadow layer. It will soon become popular on the internet. He wondered if there were more people filming. But suddenly a shadow appeared and knocked the phone out of his hands. A new message came in and the guy was very surprised. And he saw that his life would be over in 100 hours. The guy asked how so? And why he only had 100 hours left? He realized that there would be certain risks in opening this skill. The guy said there are certain risks that were mentioned earlier. It's a real disaster. The guy told himself to calm down. The main thing is not to worry, and to think of something. From the description Zhang Yu said, he needs to fulfill the position of a hunter and hunt. In other words, he can live as long as he kills others. But he also realized that, according to the text, with the help of hunting, he can get immortality forever. But he also read about decapitation, which said that it has another personality. 
when the physical body dies, it will simply move into another shell. The guy wondered what another shell means. He also wondered what it meant to enjoy the process of killing. After all, he can't really be happy about it, and if he can't kill the other one, he'll have to go to Uncle Lee. So he decided to kill the spider to earn life points. Putting the camera he said that such an opportunity is quite rare. In any case he is not afraid that the night watch will catch him. It is impossible. As the shadow connected, he clicked on the camera and said that there are quite a few others. And now they will see one of them dot. And today they have another in the form of a spider. The guy told his subscribers that they will not make noise. And quietly hit with a stick dot he decided that it is better for him to keep quiet so as not to break the silence. He said that the steel on which several thousand yuan has been spent is about to go into action. But the spider sensed his approach and turned sharply. The guy realized that something had gone wrong. But it was a false action. But even if he's standing close, the spider can't see him, and he loves the shape of a shadow. And now he needs to learn his weaknesses. After finding the spot he took all his power and used his shadow power, and struck at the spider's weak spot. In half an hour, the spider said that he has been in this world for a long time, and the environment is very comfortable for him. There is no depressing atmosphere, and the guys are not terrifying and strong point one just needs to be careful, then he can live in complete comfort, but literally just had to fight an ugly kid. He got hurt a little, but he got a full meal. He should get some sleep, and then he can recover. But suddenly the spider's sensor went off, and he realized that someone was following him. He thought it was strange, because he could feel that he was somewhere near. But this place always seemed unsafe, so he decided to spend the night somewhere else. The guy said that he felt the shadow flowing out of him like a river. So by finding the right point to strike, he was able to unleash his full power. The guy said he was fine. He only had 40% blood left, but then someone attacked him out of the blue. When he got to his feet, the guy said it didn't hurt at all. But the guy managed to jab the stick into his sweet spot, causing bleeding. Jian Yu used a shadow attack. And he realized what a shadow attack from the shadows was, attacking like a stalker in the depths. He said there was no need to fight the others face to face, just wait for the right moment to attack. And then deliver the killing blow to the victim. Aiming at the prey from the ground, the guy was patient and said that the hunt had begun. The girl opened her phone and watched a social media video of a guy saying he's a member of the Night Watch at work. And today he's going to explain the construction of low ranking and low ranking. The girl said it's no big deal. There's nothing interesting lately. But she came across Jian Yu's video and wondered what kind of place it was. But when she saw the others, she jumped out and was glad it wasn't staged. Jian Yu told him that this creature was called a shadow spider an ancient kind of ghost, first rank, lowest other. The shackles on the spider can make horrible sounds. Ordinary people can't stand it, so it's better not to hear it. The girl said that they are a herd of sheep. They only publish their disgusting and fictitious comments on the internet. If only their parents could see what they write about. She even hates their insolent behavior, but the girl tried to write a message that she could help. But suddenly the broadcast disappeared and she thought it was being led by someone else. She smiled wryly and said, things seemed to be getting much more interesting and mesmerizing for her. While Jian Yu was fighting the spider, he was fighting the spider and mocking it. The spider's many misses gave the guy an interest to keep on and on bullying him. While the same girl was watching his broadcast and saying that he was very fast and handsome, the spider released its acid and covered the ground. Jian Yu laughed and asked, does he think that by doing this, the guy can't do anything to him? The guy used his shadow bifurcation ability to confuse the spider and attack it. After coating everything with acid, the guy said he could move around in them without any difficulty. And he said he can still teleport, go through buildings as long as he needs to. Jian Yu said that he was a hunter from the shadows. The endless killing started to destroy his planet. But he remembers his name clearly. He said his name was Eu and used his new skill, Shadow Bite, sucking all the power out of the spider. After sucking out all the power and leaving only the bones of the spider, Eu said that his hunt had been completed successfully. The girl hugged the phone and said it was very exciting, and she hadn't seen anything like it in a long time. The girl decided to sign up to draw attention to herself. Maybe she can get in touch with this blogger. After opening the characteristic of the shadow, he saw and said that the spider was only the first level of the middle rank, 
and the guy thought that he had defeated a strong enemy. The guy said that there was a big gap in strength between him and this other, but he took advantage of the shadow attack. But then his phone rang and he saw that his audience had increased by 150 people. The guy said the live broadcast was over. He decided to keep the viewers in the dark for the day, so he decided to pique their interest. Using a shadow net he rose up into the sky and shouted that he was like a Spider-Man. But he couldn't control it and crashed into a wall. When he came to, he said he was in a lot of pain. He'd have to practice with her more. When he opened the menu, he saw that his lifespan had become seven days. He wondered if his lifespan had increased by only three days, less than he had expected. Even though there's still seven days to go, it's not easy to find them, so he'd better be on the safe side. He received a note saying that the hunter should hide in the shadows. The more he hides, the higher his reputation. But also received a notice about unlocking the authority value. With this he can mark his victim to make it easier to find their weaknesses and strike. And for a single target, the mark can only be created for one second, as reputation increases this time increases, and each mark charges a certain amount of energy. This ability reveals his location, and let him use it with caution. Jiang Yu scratched his head and said that his authority had been unlocked. When did he become famous? Is it because of his live broadcast, the guy thought, and decided that he would hunt others, gain subscribers, and unlock new abilities. With this kind of recruitment, both strength and abilities would increase. Jian Yu said that he needed to try a little harder today. After applying his mark, he immediately found another one dot and used the decapitation attack. The next morning he woke up in pain. It was Lu who was treating his wounds again. She asked him what was going on and who was he fighting with again. The guy told her to calm down, because he was gonna be a hero and she wouldn't understand. Really? Lu asked? and how many heroes whine about being hurt every day. Lu told him to stay out of trouble if he didn't have the right skills. The guy said he could heal his wounds in a second with his shadow form, and he didn't turn it on so Lu could help him. Lu asked him what he was talking about. The guy immediately changed the subject and suggested she watch a movie. Lu said there wasn't much to see. So she opened her phone and told him that there was a new blogger who had piqued everyone's interest. Interest asked the guy surprised? Lu showed the guy his live feed where he was introducing himself. The guy couldn't help himself and spit the water out. Lu asked what was wrong with him. The guy said it's okay and asked her if she's been watching him lately. Lu said of course, and the last two days for sure. This EU has become the most popular and unusual blogger. The guy asked in surprise, really? Isn't publishing others punishable by law? The guy realized that he had somehow become famous too quickly so the Night Watch wouldn't catch him. Lu said that he shouldn't divulge his knowledge of them. His current shows don't really affect people's minds, so it's okay. The girl told him to watch, because it's a real fight with the other one. You have to take his example and act. But she said there's another video where another blogger did a dissection of the video. But Lu's touch dazzled the guy and he froze for hours staring at her. Lu asked the guy if he thought she could be famous too. The guy asked her what she was going to shoot? put on a white silk dress and start dancing in the shadow layer? Guy asked her if she thought it would be too informative. Would she be like a member of the Night Watch? The guy said if she started going out in that outfit, her fans would start stalking her. No good can come of it. Lu asked and pulled out a gun and put it on Jiang Yu's torso. She asked if the guy was injured when he was stalking someone. Jiang Yu raised his hands and said he was joking. Lu said how does she know the guy is telling the truth? The guy told Officer Lu to give him a break, but she told him to go make food. Jian Yu plopped down on the couch after doing everything and was glad that she had finally left. Opening his personal blog, he saw numerous messages that even annoyed him. After reading them, he was upset and said that all people thought he was a scammer. But when he opened the link in his private messages, he saw the video. It said the guy is being greeted by the Earth Tao. He won't be shopping today, and best of all, they're going to take down a crook today. Dao asked his subscribers if everyone had seen the video with EU and the others and who he was. The Dark Layer, the other, the killer with amnesia. The different songs, do they all think it's real? Dao will show them the video and analyze it thoroughly. For starters, he said, watch these two frames. You can see there is no smooth transition between them. The video is spliced together. Dao told people to look at the background again. 
It's quite obvious that after the video was taken, Dao said there was editing. The guy said, isn't this just a regular food blogger walking around various restaurants? Why would you make an expose video on a guy? Besides, the guy said, he just cropped out a few of his photos. Does that count as Photoshop too? Dao said why he made a video review on him is because he is a freelancer of the Night Watch. When he was young, he killed countless others, so he can recognize a fake at a glance, and said that now they will discuss another thing. The guy decided to look at the comments. When he saw them he laughed and said that they are all fools and do not understand anything. Someday they will know the truth. The guy said that since his video is fake, it's time to start hunting others. But before we do that, we need to teach this earthly Dao a lesson. The guy took these comments normally, without any aggression, and said he was a born hunter, a man who terrifies his enemies. Jian Yu took the mini camera and attached it to himself, but he felt that the number of others was less than yesterday. The shadow layer was being reset from time to time, but suddenly he noticed another seemingly sixth-ranked opponent. It was time to start hunting, taking his bat, the guy said he wanted to see what a different sixth ranker could do. Standing on the edge of the house he didn't dare to jump. And slowly made his way down the stairs. When he went outside, he saw the other one trying to hide. But he used his tagging abilities. He said that the marked man felt inexplicable fear at the same moment. This monster looked a lot like the other one with blades he had encountered before. Evolved, he thought. But this guy wasn't afraid. Because he too had undergone a change and used the six-blade technique. The other won't give up so easily. And the guy said he was going to be chased. Activating all his skills, he attacked the other one, but his attack was missed. Because the other also had strong magic and abilities, the fight will be very difficult. The other one kept trying to hurt Jian Yu with his tentacles. But the guy was very good at defending himself against them. The guy said he started to feel dizzy. The other one is attacking him mentally. When he hit the guy, he saw that he had been thrown backwards, and the blood scale was down to 66%. The other guy had consumed 34% of his blood in one blow. Jiang Yu got to his feet and said that this other one had very powerful attacks, and one should stick to some strategy. The guy is going to use a shadow attack and disappear every time he mocks him, and taunt him for not hitting. Yaino was really waiting for this moment, to kill the guy and drink his blood. Jian Yu is also smart and acted according to strategy. The guy said that even though he's evolved, his skills are still the same. He told the other guy that this is his territory and he's not in the plus side today. Every attack of the other one, he kept missing. The guy told him not to try because he wouldn't succeed. The guy didn't wait long and used a decapitation attack. Suddenly the guy froze in a moment. When he saw the other guy's face, he said he was from the Night's Watch. He asked if this guy was taken away, and why did he become like this? But after asking such a question, the other tried to disappear. The guy stopped and told him to stop. Jiang Yu told him that he wanted to talk to him. He ran after him, but in a moment he stopped and looked around. The guy got a notification that he found his prey. He is a man who is passionate about his work, so he is looking forward to the next successful hunt. The guy said the hunt was almost successful but at the last moment the victim escaped. Unfortunately, the hunt failed. He was informed that continued failure would weaken him and shorten his life expectancy. Deep down the guy realizes that only constant hunting will increase his authority, and he will gain power over death. But in the moment, let the guy think about what it means to live. Is it the hunt or something else? Then there will be an expectation of death and constant waiting. The guy was out of his mind, so he told him enough. A hero who sacrifices himself to save people becomes this. If he dies, he'll turn into a monster too. There's no turning back. He has to keep hunting. Jian Yu has arrived at the eastern district number one, the gathering place of outsiders, the wasteland. The guy said that the news said that outsiders gather here all the time, so there's nothing to worry about. The guy used his shadow pupil ability and moved to the roof to get a better view of the others. He said the number of others in this place is much higher. But they're not very brave, so they won't come out of the building. The guy saw that there is one other on the roof. He is incredibly strong, but his leg is badly damaged, so his blood volume is down. The guy said it's fine and he won't stumble again. As he approached the other, he immediately sensed that there was something wrong. The shadow immediately hid from him, 
so as not to frighten him. The guy said it's the others who are so vigilant. And the others here are much more careful than in his territory. The guy said that this monster is very sensitive. The red dots on his body have weakened because of his attentiveness. So the guy decided that he needs to calm him down. Jian Yu said that he would have to be patient and wait for him to calm down. When he saw that the other guy had calmed down, he tagged him. He was waiting for the right moment to attack him. While Lu was cooking at home, the door opened and her father came in. She asked him where he was and why he was back so late. She said she could help her. When she turned around, she saw Uncle Li and her father. Li asked her if she was cooking for Jian Yu again. Lu's father said that he must have raised his daughter for his family. Lu told her father he was talking nonsense again. She asked them why they were back so early. Lu's father said the office was finished with business, so they decided to leave. It's rare to get together for a nice meal. Can we go to a restaurant, he asked Lu. Lu said there was no need, she was almost done. Headley said they would go another day then. But for now let's all sit together. Li asked if Jiang Yu was out. Lu said she didn't know, maybe he went out for a walk. At the time, the guy was just trying to open the door. Li said it was outrageous. How could he go off to have fun and leave her here alone? The guy said he was hungry. He wondered what Lu had made today. It smells so good. Jian Yu said that he was in a good mood today, so he decided to buy her his favorite lollipop. It cost him a lot of money, and the dogs almost chewed him up on the way. But when he saw Uncle Lee and Lu, he quickly shut up and put the lollipop in his pocket, telling them that he had been held up by dogs and had gotten into trouble on the way. Uncle Lee said that it's rare to have a moment together, so don't let him spoil the fun. He told him to sit down. Lee told him that all guys fight and there's nothing wrong with it, right? Jian Yu couldn't say anything and kept silent. Lu's father said he doesn't see anything wrong with bragging to a girl he likes when he's young. It's okay. Father Lu also said he saw a guy walking with a lady in a short skirt. What's her name? he asked. Lu closed her eyes and said that her name was Yuzhoer. Lu's father said that she was pretty, white, clean, and had an unblemished figure. When he was young, he would have given anything for a girl like her. The guy smiled and spoke in his head. How could Uncle Lu speak in front of Lu Yao? Her face even turned red. Uncle Li said to leave these conversations and asked everyone to raise their glasses. Jian Yu raised his glass and said that it was to Uncle Lu. Seeing Jian Yu drink in a volley, even that it wasn't an alcoholic beverage, I realized that this guy wasn't bad. The guy told Uncle Lu to eat vegetables. You're not home all day. I don't think they often get to eat Yao's cooking. Lu's father said it's a rare opportunity. The guy said he thinks Yao cooks at home a lot. No wonder her skills are top-notch. Lu's father wondered why he was eating takeout food. Apparently she puts a lot of effort into taking care of Jian Yu, even cooking such a variety of dishes. Uncle Li told Jian Yu to drink to Uncle Lu. Jian Yu wished him success in his work affairs. After saying goodbye to each other, Jian Yu asked his uncle if he was thirsty. But he said no. Sitting down on the couch, Uncle Lee said he wanted to ask the boy. He asked him if he thought he had any ability. Uncle Lee said that he had been in the night watch for twenty years. Jiang Yu thought he couldn't recognize his injuries and ordered him to speak when he had his ability. Jiang Yu laughed and sat down next to him and said that they had appeared half a month ago. Lee asked him how they had awakened. The guy said he didn't even know how they woke up. They just appeared out of nowhere, Lee asked him, by themselves? This kind of situation is rare, once a year or so, the guy asked him if it was because of his talents. Lee said nothing and put his hand on his shoulder and told him to relax. Lee told the kid that this year's test. Everyone has to pass a martial arts exam. Jiang Yu said that he and Yao know about IT. Li said that in recent years, the night watch unit has been under a lot of pressure, and the number of casualties is constantly increasing and he can give the guy a backup dot if he can't pass the martial arts exam. It's no big deal. Lee said the kid can choose from several universities to enroll in. Doesn't he like comics, he asked? He can go to the art department, or something else. No problem. The guy asked if he didn't want to enroll. Could he just take his diploma? Lee punched him and said no. Lee said that he will go to Lingdong University. It has a very favorable atmosphere. When he finishes his studies, get him a stable job and then he will live happily with Yao Yao. Jian Yu told Uncle Li that he wanted to try to become special. Li loudly told him no, 
he must obey. The guy stood up and said, no. If Lee won't let him, he'll go to the night watch and pawn his uncle. Lee said he's going to pawn him? Uncle Lee said that he wasn't kidding. The world of the special ones is much more dangerous than he can imagine. Let Jian Yu study with peace of mind, and he will take care of everything. The boy told Uncle Lee that he's serious too. Danger lurks everywhere. Besides, he won't be able to take care of him forever. Uncle Lee accepted the boy's choice and said that he would regret his decision, and if he wanted to transfer, he could contact him at any time. Jiang Yu told Lee not to stick it to him. Uncle Lee sent him away and said he was leaving. The guy told him to wait and told him that the last time he looked at the information Yao had shared, it said that the special ones should use all their powers before they die so that they wouldn't turn into another. Is there a chance that a person will still be different even if they have exhausted all their powers? The guy asked. Lee said, of course. This kind of situation can occur if a person's ability is special or if there was an external interference. Lee got curious and asked him why he was asking. The guy said just for fun, sporting interest. Lee told the guy, if he chooses martial arts, sooner or later he'll have to face all this. It's better if he takes a break and stops fighting. As he was leaving, Lee remembered and told the boy that this year's tests would be held before the new year, and told him to get ready. Sitting down on the couch, the boy wondered why his uncle had become different. Was it because of his abilities or because of the influence of something external? The guy said that the night watch should take everyone depending on what powers they have. Could he be wrong about something? The guy asked himself. Or does he have a hallucinatory ability? The girls saw that the blogger EU published a new video and quickly went to watch it by updating the story. The girl read the comments and said the number of haters has increased a lot lately. They're just jealous of the guy's skills and decided to see how long they'd last. The girls said that the guys do not understand anything. That's why they write different nasty things, and that it is a montage. She said that Brother EU is definitely not a liar. Otherwise he wouldn't have released such videos, so she decided to watch it. The girl watching this video was very surprised by the video, and immersed herself so deeply in this material that it was as if she was experiencing it live. Participating with the guy in this battle she was very happy and fearful and thought the guy was very handsome. The girl said that it is exciting, and the real battle of the special with the others is real. It's impossible to do, and there can be no mistake. The girl was sure that he was really a Beidou assassin. After seeing his shadow bite ability, he absorbed another one. It was because he had previously absorbed another spider, and he had gained a new ability. When he looked in the mirror and saw his wound, the boy said he was in pain. The others in this area are very strong. If they weren't wounded, I'm afraid he wouldn't have survived. Suddenly, a notification came to him where Dao again said that he had watched Yu's video blogger again today. He said that it looked more realistic this time, but nothing could escape his eyes. Dao said that as everyone can see the other is seriously injured. The other is very weak in this state, so even an ordinary person can deal with him. Dao asked if the special one would pay attention to such weak ones. The guy got angry and closed his phone. Jiang Yu said it was a bad fight, I agree. But he's so angry with that Dao. The guy said that his current strength is not enough for something more. He must become stronger. So much so that no one dares to doubt him anymore. After opening the shadow menu, he said he'd take out 200 Yao Yao and 15 Uncle Li. Where is he weak then? But his current abilities are not enough. He needs to become stronger. Thanks to these battles... He has acquired new skills. First of all, as for the shadow points, he thinks it's an experience bar. But it's also kind of an energy bar. He needs about three points to use shadow thread and shadow pupil. Beheading, tag and chase have different degrees of consumption. And the shape of the shadow the guy said depends on the environment. For example, in the shadow layer, the consumption will be low. If you just go into the shade, the consumption will be estimated as medium but in sunlight it will be high. He said that he thought the special ones were very strong, so he could only fight them in shadow form, and I don't think he'll be able to do it for long. But even his current strength should be enough to scare them away. Everything should work out, said the guy, but there may be a lot of problems, so restraint is not for him. And he decided to give it his best. In any case, Uncle Lee will be for him. Why be afraid? The next day, the girls called the boys to evaluate their outfits. The guy said they were cheaters. Didn't they say it would take an hour? 
and they've been here forever. Jian Yu told the guy, if he continues to waste his life like this, he won't even last a few days. The guy told him not to joke like this on the eve of the new year, it's unfortunate. Jian Yu said that he wasn't joking, if he didn't kill, he would die himself. The guy surprisingly asked him, what is he talking about? Jian Yu abruptly changed the subject and said that he was joking and the girls had just arrived. Lu suggested that the guys sit down somewhere and eat. The girls said she wanted a salad. Jian Yu asked her what could be more delicious in the grass, and suggested we go to a cafe that students like very much. When she got to the cafe, Lu asked if this was the place that the students like so much. The girl said yes, but she thought it was more for guys. Jian Yu said that he had recently been injured, so he needed to catch up on his work. He ordered a bunch of dishes for himself. Lu looked at him and was surprised because he had ordered all the usual dishes, but she thought he would order something special. But the guy said that he really ordered all the usual dishes, and in addition ordered bigger and fresher oysters. The guy told Lu not to get mad and handed her a cutlet. But stubborn Lu refused and said she wouldn't. But suddenly she got a message on her phone saying that the exam will be held on February 17th, and will end on February 20th. The guy also resented that the competition would start early. Jian Yu told him not to worry, because his qualifications were not enough. The guy said, as everyone knows, when he was seven years old, he was badly frightened by a different one. By the time he was destroyed, he had developed a mental illness. Jian Yu said he would deal with him right away. Lu asked him if he thought everyone was like him. Lu said that most people would run away in a situation like this. Even if everything feels normal, the others are still nowhere to be found. Everyone remained silent, but Jian Yu couldn't stand it and suggested that everyone drink a little. After picking up the glass, a siren rang and Lu said that it was a pollution sensor. All the people stood up and ran. Lu said it meant that an alien had entered the mall. One of the people shouted to everyone to run, and like a herd of animals, they all stood up and started pushing each other. The guy said there were too many people and they couldn't get out. Lu said that the first thing to do was to stay calm and move slowly toward the exit. Jian Yu took all the strength in his fist and broke through the wall to the exit. The guys froze when they saw this, and the guy shouted at them to run, but Jian Yu saw someone else and froze. He realized that there were too many people around, and if he reincarnated, everyone would see. Lu said that there should be barriers near them all, so how could there be anything else? Jian Yu said that it was too late to reason about it. He should pick up his feet and run away from here. Fortunately, he was discovered more or less in time. Jian Yu stopped everyone and told them to hold on to him. But everything failed, and they fell down. When Jian Yu got back on his feet, he asked the guys if they were all right. Lu said they were fine just some scratches on his face. The guy said he was in a lot of pain and his leg was jammed. Jian Yu told him not to worry, he would pull him out now. Grasping the stone, Jian Yu lifted it up and freed the guy's leg. But his leg was broken in two. Lu quickly took some pills from her pocket and told him to eat them, they should help him. The boy asked what this place was and why it was so dark. Lu said that she doesn't know, because she has never been in this kind of situation before. Jian Yu said that he thinks they are on some floor of a shopping mall, but we need to figure it out. After applying the shadow power, Jian Yu couldn't believe it, because he felt a familiar sensation. He said that the entire floor was dragged into the shadow layer. Jian Yu looked around and saw the girl crying, and people were all coming to their senses. The man told his daughter not to be afraid, the men from the night watch would soon come to rescue them. In his head, Jian Yu realized that there were a lot of people around him. There were no means of transportation in the shadow layer, so it would take a lot of time for the night watch to reach them. If they stay here long enough, they'll be exposed to a decent amount of pollution, if not caught by others. We need to get everyone out as soon as possible. Jian Yu asked Lu, doesn't she wear the watch his uncle gave her? Lu said yes, because she almost forgot about it. Lu said that this watch could signal for help so the men of the night watch would come faster. Jian Yu knew that this watch couldn't speed up the arrival of the squad, but it could definitely resist pollution. Jian Yu said that the other could attack at any time, and he should not let his guard down. All the people started shouting that the monster had come. Jian Yu had no choice but to use something to turn into a shadow. Lu came to her senses and started looking for her friends. Xia said she was here. 
The guy asked them where they are. He can't see them. Xia told Lu to look at this huge hole that divided into their two sides. They wondered if Jian Yu could have fallen through there. Jian Yu's fan was also transported to this world. She was covered in abrasions and didn't understand what had happened. She remembered that she was out with Xia for a walk. Then the alarm sounded and everyone suddenly ran. She started screaming for her friend and looking, but suddenly she saw a bloody hand and looked at it. It was her friend. But suddenly she saw someone else from above trying to kill her. But she never thought she'd be in the plot of a movie. But the heroine from the movie comes to save the hero. In real life it's impossible, she said. No one will save her. And in reality there are no heroes. When she opened her eyes she saw Jiang Yu, who had saved her from her death. She was very happy and called him a hero. Jiang Yu received a notification that the Shadow Claw works in conjunction with the assassin ability increasing the lethality of the strikes. After using the new skill, the guy disappeared and started to think of an attack strategy. The girl couldn't believe that she saw her favorite blogger Yu. She jumped on him and said that she is her fan and watches every video, and said that she likes the guy a lot. Jian Yu told the girl that her pantyhose and dress are torn, but suddenly she left and said she hated it, and asked her brother Yu what he was looking at. Yu said he was just reminding her. The girl said that if Yu's brother doesn't like it, she can run home and change into a new one. Yu asked her really, even the pantyhose? The girl smiled and said that of course everything was for him. Yu said it's not the time for that. And now it's time for the hunt to begin. The guy started bullying the other guy again, and attacked him, but missed. He said he had the strength and agility to do it, otherwise he'd be dead. He tried to attack the other one again. But the other one repelled his blow, and two more came to his aid, he said. The girl watched the live broadcast and wished him luck. And if he wins, the girl will wear stockings for him. Hearing this, Jiang Yu said that he would do anything for this, and for a moment, he even blushed, fighting with monsters not for life, but to death. The guy was surprised by their strength and missed the moment when Ingo rose into the air, but that didn't scare him and used the shadow net attack neutralizing and neutralizing their dangerous claw weapons. Jian Yu asked the other one if he wanted to kill him, but he couldn't. But suddenly, another other one attacked him from behind and the guy's blood spilled onto the pavement. The guy said they're working together, two holding back while one attacks, and if this keeps up, the guy's got no chance of winning. We gotta do something, but in a moment a few different, all at once attacked the guy. Fending off their blows the guy said they were keeping him in the shadows. The guy's blood was getting smaller and smaller with each blow. He said we can't go on like this. He said that he had to trap the enemies. Using the marking ability, he started chasing them. From the last battle said guy, the duration of the mark has been extended by three seconds. During this time, the selected target will stop thinking clearly due to fear. Counting the marks every second, he attacked these others and slowly sucked the blood from them and the decapitation attack came. After killing one of the others, he recovered and looked at the others with a baleful look, saying that it was their turn. Opening his arms to the others, he asked them what's wrong. Weren't they doing well? Why don't they continue? The guy said that if they don't attack, then he will attack. But suddenly he saw a strange light and stopped and asked, where does the light come from in the shadow layer? Jian Yu wondered why he had a sudden urge to go there. But not only did he have this urge, so did others. The Night Watch Commander's son said that the eternally burning torch after use emits a soft glow that disperses shadows, can be used as a light source. After shattering all the others to pieces, Guy was surprised that they were one at a time, if that's the power of the Night Watch. If they hit him, he thinks he'd disappear in a second. Jian Yu told them that they had come late. After all, he had almost lost. The man apologized for being late, and asked if everyone was all right? The guy said he wasn't that important. Let them take better care of the girl. The girl told him to wait, and asked him if he was going to bring her home. The guy said he was kidding, because night watch people always put work first. The guy said he would leave her to them. But the girl was very offended by him, almost even cried and told him to wait. But the guy disappeared from their sight. The commander asked if they had such a person? The man said that this host is very famous on his platform uses shadow power. But he's not particularly strong. He thinks the guy is somewhere on the first level. Level 1 asked the commander? He's got a torch in his hand. How could there be a shadow? He disappeared in front of so many people. Is he on level 1? 
asked the commander, leaving everything behind, the commander said to bring the girl home. And then check on the CU. At that time, Lu said to Jiang Yu and was very worried about him. He couldn't be dead. But Guy raised his hand and said that he was here, and told her to help him. It feels like he's being torn apart, he said. Lu told him to hold on for a while, she'd get the rocks out. The guy said he couldn't take it anymore and asked her to get him out. Lu asked him how he got here in the first place. He could have died. When she pulled him out, she told him that the rocks were not pressing him. Lu saw his back and asked him how he got the wound like that. Was it from the rocks? The guy said he doesn't know if it's from stones. It's not really from a stone, it's from something else. The guy asked her where Fong and Lu were. Lu said that the night watch came to help, so they were taken away. The guy asked her if she stayed behind to find him. Lu said, so what? If something happened to him, how would she look Uncle Lee in the eye? The guy froze and let out a little tear. Hugging her tightly, he couldn't let her go. But Lu, at that moment, felt something. Lu told him what he was doing and asked him to let her go. The guy said he had only seen huge ones with blades, they were so ugly. The guy said how scared he was and offered to hug some more. Lu told him she was gonna kill him, but suddenly a strange girl came in and asked them if they were all right, because she had heard the screams. Lu pushed the guy away and said it was okay. The stranger told them to follow her, she would take them to the exit, but suddenly the guy remembered and stopped. Lu asked him what was wrong. He said nothing but actually he forgot to absorb the other ones. The next day, there was an investigation at the Night Watch headquarters. It was Jian Yu who was asked for his characterization. The girl said that the consequences of the incident are not so great, but they are there. Some people needed psychological help, and the duration of treatment will be about a month. This girl was a member of the Night Watch, Li Yuan. Li said that if you take a martial arts test during this period, your grade will be lowered. Jian Yu said he thought he was fine. He asked if he had to undergo therapy. Lee said that the contamination process can be hidden, and sometimes it is too late to do anything. So, it is imperative to get treatment. The guy smiled and said that then he had about ten days before the exam. Lee told him not to worry. There were many similar situations last year as well, so Nightwatch had developed a special policy on this matter. Interested person can apply in advance. Jian Yu asked surprisingly in advance? Lee told him to contact his parents or guardian, have them all sign. Lee said that the pretest is conducted during night patrols, and the results are also entered into the system, just like an exam. The testing equipment is also exactly the same, Lee said, open and impartial. The night watch will guarantee safety in case of unforeseen situations. Jian Yu said his guardian uncle and he also works in the night watch. Lee said that it makes things easier. She told the guy to tell her his name. The guy said that it seems that his uncle works in the head department of the first civil district, and his name is Li Xiuenguang. Li stood up abruptly and said, and asked exactly Li Xiuenguang, and was he sure he was an ordinary civilian? The guy said no. He wasn't fired, he didn't do anything. Li said no, he wasn't fired, and the guy didn't do anything. Li said that she would take the boy to his uncle and let him follow her. Going up to the main headquarters, the boy froze at what he saw. A passerby said this guy is not a member of the Night Watch. There's been a lot of checks, but they don't have a man named Yu. Lee asked the guy what was the matter, why he stopped. The guy said it was his first time here, and he was a little worried. But he knew he was in trouble because the Night Watch had started checking him out. Lee told him not to worry, and told him to rest by the door for a while while she went to see Inspector Lee. When he entered the room, he was surprised to see all his friends in the waiting room. Lu asked the girl if she really saw Eu. The girl proudly said that of course she had seen him, because he had saved her from monsters and other creatures. When he saw that girl, he wondered why she was here, too. He thought it was a problem. Lu told Jian Yu to sit next to her and started to continue her story about Blogger Yu. The girl said that she saw him fight ten others at once. He looked very calm and relaxed, killing them all in an instant. Just when the others could no longer move, the night watch arrived. Brother Yu disappeared into the shadows, leaving his laurels behind. The guy in his head thought she shouldn't put oil on the fire like that. But what lovely stockings she had. Lu asked who this Yu was. They said he was a member of the night watch. The girl said she thought he was a student like them. Where did she get this information from? Lu asked. The girl said that his words and actions, as well as her intuition, of course, speak about it. 
What is most important, he is simply in love with girls' legs, especially if they are uncovered, just like hers. She pointed her finger at Jiang Yu. The guy was very surprised by this and didn't realize that she was pointing at him. Lu jumped up and grabbed Jiang Yu and said, Does he want to die? But at that moment, Lu's father ran in. Lu was very surprised to see him. Lu's father asked if she was okay, because he had heard that she had fallen into the shadow layer. Lu said that everything was fine, and Jiang Yu was fine too. The boy said he was only a little hungry. Lu's father said, If it's okay, then let them follow him. Lu asked her father, is the situation serious this time? Father said, of course. After all, this is the first time in history that an entire store has fallen into the shadow layer. The victims are still being counted, but it's a good thing they weren't hurt. The father told the boys that they should have been notified that the test would be held earlier because of the incident. My father decided to briefly summarize it. The test is divided into two parts. The first is an aptitude test. The second is a test of willpower. Aptitude testing is known as initial awakening. Candidates will resist contamination. I in this test, the risks are quite low. Basically, there is a distribution of abilities based on characteristics. The object of the willpower test will be their spiritual will. This test will be the key to whether they can become special. The guy said if the key to success is willpower, the stronger the better. Lu's dad said it's optional. Some people can bear the pain of a severed arm but their qualifications will remain mediocre. Others do nothing but make a fool of themselves, but at the same time show themselves at their best. Willpower, Father Lu said, is not only the ability to bear pain, but also to believe in goodness, to resist evil thoughts, to tolerate pollution. In general, it's quite complicated. The guy asked if these items affect willpower. Lu's father asked why. Lu said, for example, someone's mind is on a girl's legs. The guy smiled and said she was angry. Father Lu said there are several other factors, but these three are the most common. If these three points are distorted in any way and the heart is filled with negative emotions, everything will go to waste. Why did Jiang Yu ask? Father Lu said that evil thoughts will only attract evil. Negative emotions are also a kind of pollution, and if it all accumulates over a long period of time, the pollution will eventually become immense. So if there are any negative emotions, it is time to release them. If you keep them in your heart, it will not lead to anything good. Drooling, he thought in his head that he should go and massage his feet to cleanse his soul. Lu's father told them to come back in a little while because the testing would begin. Lu's father told Jiang Yu that his uncle Li probably won't be back for a while. So he signed all the documents in his place. The boy said he apologized for the inconvenience. Father Lu told them not to worry so much, but to go with the flow. Jiang Yu smiled and thanked him. When the girl entered the waiting room, she asked them if they were back. Lu saw that everything was empty and asked where the others were. The girl said that they left with the employees. Why didn't she leave? Lu asked. The girl said her parents are in business. They left town a couple days ago and haven't been back yet. She just finished talking to them. They'll sign the papers remotely. The guys came in and were glad everyone was here. The guy said it was amazing. They sprayed some kind of product on his leg, and it stopped hurting. Jiang Yu said he has an injury. Is he sure he wants to pass the test? The guy told them not to worry. The doctor said it won't affect the result. The girl said that despite his confident face, he had literally just been crying in the corner. The guy got angry and said he wasn't crying. Seeing the people outside, Jiang Yu asked why these people were so depressed. Lu said he couldn't understand. They just want to live a peaceful life. Lu said that, however, after the trial, they will probably start to see some changes. Misley said that everyone was gathered and it was time to get down to business. Misley said the test is divided into two parts, aptitude and willpower. The aptitude test will be evaluated in terms of their development potential, destructive power, and the ability to use it. The abilities are divided into low, medium, high and highest. The willpower test aims to identify resistance to pollution. The following colors will be awarded white, green, blue, purple, red and orange. In the previous year, first level abilities were not allowed to participate in the trial. But this year, everyone must participate without exception. Assessing their potential to become special must be considered at all stages of their power development. With enough strength, Misley said they will have the ability to counterattack. But if their willpower is inferior to their ability, 
they can only become a civilian worker. Ms. Lee slammed the book closed and said that was it and let all the boys follow her. Walking into the waiting room, Jiang Yu pondered while looking at the glass. But suddenly, a voice from the speaker called Feng for a test. She was told to go in. No need to worry Dot but Feng's fear was consuming her, and she pulled herself together in a moment and said that she was here. After entering the testing room, the teacher pulled down the robe from the balloon and told her that she could begin. But suddenly the lights went out all over the room. Lu asked if the power had to be turned off. It seems to be a test of willpower. Jian Yu remained silent and watched, as he was used to such darkness having often been in the shadow layer. The guy who saw the crystal said her feet were like stone and it glowed. It's like she ran into something powerful. But suddenly the lights came on and Feng came out. Lu asked her how she was doing. Feng said that unfortunately she had no talent for willpower. She had practiced a lot in the past, but it was no use. Lu said you wanted to be special? Feng said yes, but it didn't work out, so she asked him if he was happy. Lu was invited next. He said he didn't want to be special and prayed when he entered the testing room. Feng told him not to worry, because he couldn't be special. After passing the test, Lu came out and said that he had passed. Fong was surprised to hear this and couldn't believe her ears. Fong fell on her knees and said that she wanted to be special but it didn't work out. Lu said that he didn't want to but he did. Seeing this Lu said that they were just unlucky. Lu Ya was invited next. After exhaling, she turned around to Jiang Yu and said she was going. After seeing Lu's test, the guy was surprised and said that Yao's stone was red while the others were green. He remembered that willpower corresponds to six different ranks and colors and red is the fifth rank. After leaving the testing room, Feng asked her if she had passed. Lu said with clenched hands that she had passed. Jiang Yu asked her if she was tired. It's hard for her to breathe. Lu told him to go, and he would understand. Jiang Yu went to kiss her and said, Come on, why not motivate him somehow? Lu told him to fuck off. Jiang Yu was the next one to be invited into the testing room. He said goodbye to his friends and joyfully entered the room. The teacher asked him if he had awakened the ability. The boy said yes, and told him to drink this jar. The teacher said he wouldn't ask much about the crystal, and suggested he just start testing his willpower. After putting the crystals on himself his teacher told him not to be nervous, and to only go forward. His abilities had awakened, so he would feel his consciousness separating from his body as he moved forward. Once in that world... The guy said it's amazing to him, he can't feel his body. But he's still connected to it. Jian Yu started dancing while in another world. And shouted that it was unforgettable and very cool. The teacher told him not to jump or his test would be interrupted. The boy stopped abruptly and said he understood. Seeing the crystal he said running there all somehow looked too easy at first. But suddenly he didn't realize what was happening. His body was getting heavier and heavier and it was getting harder to breathe. He realized something was starting to affect him. Despair, sadness, anger. But he had to fight back. But suddenly he heard Uncle Lee's voice. He asked him where he came from. Lee told the boy that he was not special. He would only hurt others if he continued. The boy started to deny his words and said it was an illusion, not Uncle Lee. He told the boy to realize that he was not capable enough. Silhouette Lee said that the mountains and rivers are destroyed and others are rampaging everywhere. The guy understands everything. He can live a happy life. So why bother with such nonsense, Lee asked? Uncle Lee said that special is not about strength, but about will. And he is his nephew Jiang Yu, and asked the guy if he could follow their example. After seeing the terrible consequences in the battle, Lee told the guy that such an end is special, and asked him again, does he really want to be like them? Don't let the guy fool himself because really he just wants to be the center of attention. Just as countless teenagers dream of being superheroes, staying in bed, no early risings, fun, female love. He doesn't like it when older people try to talk to him. He is an individual with his own thoughts and goals. To feel that he is destined for something greater. He is different from everyone else. He likes to be assertive, strive for more. He doesn't have many abilities but he craves for many things. Lee said that in fact the guy himself realizes that there is nothing special about him. All this is just youthful maximalism. Moving the guy to the other side, Lee said that the dark side of this world was by no means a shadow layer. Even if the sun is shining brightly over his head, there will always be something he can't see. 
This is the hidden world. There's nothing beautiful about it, and it's not a fairy tale. If the guide becomes special, he'll have to reap the rewards of his decisions. Lee said that now they will go back to the original question. Can Jian Yu become special? While the boy was looking for himself, Ms. Lee came into the room and asked the teacher what was going on. The teacher said nothing yet, he's just going around and around. Ms. Lee said that it was normal. After all, the pollution he had received was not something everyone could endure. The teacher said that only people with high resilience would be able to advance further. The teacher said that Jiang Yu's goals were not so clear to them. Ms. Li told the teacher that the crystal turned red. The teacher was surprised and didn't understand what was wrong with him. He must have a fifth rank, but it didn't look like much. Li said, maybe it's a sixth rank. Teacher said that he didn't know. After all, in a few decades, only a few people had reached the sixth rank. But suddenly the light of the crystal began to flicker. The teacher didn't understand what was going on. He told Ms. Lee to check the boy's watch for abnormalities. Li said that all the boy's vitals were normal. The teacher said it's impossible. The closer you get, the more powerful his willpower becomes. But his willpower is weakening. Suddenly he saw the guy taking slow steps towards the crystal. Teacher said it's a joke. He wants to touch the crystal? Even a person with sixth rank willpower can't do that. When Jian Yu touched the crystal, a portal opened. A voice told him that he shouldn't become special. Let the guy think about himself and his friends. His dear man and his loved ones. A voice told him to make his choice. But the guy shouted enough and that was enough of his ears ringing. The boy smiled and said it was some kind of temptation. He thought that maybe he had already given in. After meeting Uncle Lee, he said that to be honest, he was caught off guard at the beginning. He even hesitated. He really just wanted to look like a hero in the eyes of others and he didn't care about the rest. But in this world, there were no supermen, only ordinary people who were able to succeed, said Jian Yu. And it was their dedication that brought the world to stability. A guy once said he enjoyed the peace, but he doesn't want to hide behind the backs of others anymore. Jian Yu said that he wanted to light his own flame and finally light up the darkness once and for all. The doctor came to Lu's father and said that the shadow layer incident had affected the second, third, and fourth floors of the mall. The fifth floor, although not completely, was also affected. As for the people, about 850 people were involved. Among them, about 700 were trapped in the shadow layer. More than 650 were rescued, but the search is still ongoing. A total of 30 students are going to take part in the martial arts exam. For early testing, several groups have been processed. Contamination will be checked. Lu's father asked what the pollution department said. Lu's subordinate said the results are ready and he sent it to him. Opening the laptop he saw that the shadow species code name, Wandering Spirit, Pollution Level 1. The subordinate said that the three spirits are very similar in terms of morphology, bones and tissues. Traces of human product were also found. The doctor said it's impossible. Everyone has individual traits that change during mutation. And those traits couldn't be distributed in three different ways at once. Commander Lu lit a cigarette and said, it seems like something is happening in Beidou. Some creatures hiding in the dark can no longer sit still. But when he looked outside, he saw a bright light that blinded his eyes. When he looked closely, he saw that this light was coming from the testing room. Commander Lu decided to check what happened there. He said that the best result of the willpower test was orange light. Gold light was out of the question. Walking into the testing room, Commander Lu was surprised to see. All the guys looked at Jian Yu and couldn't take their eyes off. When he saw the guy, he also froze and couldn't believe his eyes. The teacher came up to him and said that it was Jian Yu. After coming out of the trial, Commander Lu decided to talk to Jian Yu. He got him some water. The guy asked him what about Lu and the others. Commander Lu said that while the kid was being tested, they were in the break room. They don't need to know what happened. Lu told Jian Yu that he surprised him a lot. Level 5 is very good, not to mention level 6. After all, the guy had created golden light in the first place. Jian Yu laughed and said that his golden light is legendary. Better even rank SIX. Lu said that it might be, but it's hard to say for sure yet. Commander Lu said that they might be dissecting and studying them. Jian Yu told his uncle not to scare him like that. Lu said that there was nothing wrong with it. He needs to be studied, and someone will do it. His information has been sent to a think tank for study. He's being monitored. The guy asked if it's that much trouble. 
Lou said it's fine, he'll accompany him. He just needs to go through a couple of procedures. The same day the think tank came to study him, and they asked him various questions. People who watched him on the screen said he was the guy who created the golden light. He looks ordinary, but they can't believe he was better than everyone else. But golden light doesn't always mean genius. Maybe it's a bug in the system. The committee asked him what he saw in the willpower test. People said it looked like something great was coming. The guy said he fought the aliens. The guy said he was bored here. Uncle Lou had everything ready for him. But why does he have to stay here? Lou asked him when he saw the others, what was he thinking? The kid said he was excited. He thought he was about to be special, felt the responsibility on his shoulders. The guy asked Uncle Lou, he has a map on the wall, right? Lou was surprised by the question and said yes. The guy said that only five of their ten places have survived. He thinks they are in a pretty tricky situation. It's not that simple, and they need to find out the truth. Lou thought, what kind of game is this punk playing? What's he doing? The guy said he saw people in that world getting cold and hot. It's horrible. And he tried to do everything he could to light the torch. After failing to do so, he became the only source of light. Commander Lou apologized to the committee and said that Jian Yu sometimes likes to fool around. The teacher said he didn't think the boy's story would be so touching. Ms. Lee said she thought the boy would have a happy future in the night watch. The guys said it's no wonder he recreated the golden light. Maybe it was an epiphany. He's very talented. There's no doubt about it. Jian Yu thought that he should be allowed to go home soon, because he really wanted to go for a massage. Commander Lu said the guy could go and wait for notification. What kind of notification did the guy ask for? Lou said about the special training camp. After leaving the night watch headquarters, Uncle Lou said, didn't he tell him to keep his head down? Now everyone in the night watch knows about him. Jian Yu apologized for the inconvenience. Commander Lu said he didn't even know what to say to Lee. He didn't want the guy to be special. I think he'll be angry. I told the guy to go home and don't forget to come to the training camp on March 25th. The guy surprisingly asked what training camp. Commander Lu said that people like him would receive special training for a few months. After completing the training, he would take a martial arts exam. Commander Lu said that when the boy returns home, he shouldn't mention what happened in front of Lu Yao. When he opened the menu, the guy saw that he had twenty days left. His few months starting next month would be out of his life, so he had to prepare for that. He must hunt as much as he can to prolong his life. Suddenly, he sees another and sees it as a great opportunity. The guy used a shadow-walking ability that he can use to move on any surface. Once tagged, he decapitated the other one. He said it was a badly wounded other. He was running to save his life. He didn't expect more. But his life was cut short. He will never see tomorrow again. Luckily the guy said he spotted him just in time. But suddenly someone shouted from behind and asked the guy where his other one was. When he looked at him he saw a regular guy who was also after someone else, and it seemed to be his prey. The guy was very bossy and told Jiang Yu that he would pay for it. Jiang Yu asked, why did he become a thief? The guy said, Jiang Yu stopped pretending, because he stole what belongs to him. The guy attacked Jiang Yu, but stopped abruptly at the end. Jiang Yu asked him what he was doing. The guy took off his mask and said he saw him online and his name is Yu. He's a fan and watches every broadcast. The guy pulled out his phone and decided to take a selfie with him, and told him we should have split the loot according to the rules. Jian Yu asked him, what other rules are there? The guy started to film the broadcast and said that streamer Yu had stolen his loot from a harmless gatherer and didn't even apologize. Jian Yu told him to wait, because he didn't know about it. Jian Yu got angry and grabbed the guy and told him to explain everything normally. The guy said he would. The guy said that they were freelancers of the Night Watch. Once Yu reaches the first rank of mid-level, he can join them. Jian Yu asked him what freelancers do. The guy said they don't earn much, about 6,000 to 7,000 yuan. Jian Yu told the guy to have respect. After all, he gets much less than seven. That's almost his monthly manuscript fee. The guy said he understands, but the risks are too great. They rely on themselves, and they could die at any time. This is just a shabby other in the shadow layer. Jian Yu asked him who he was selling these others to. The guy said that he was selling to the Night Watch, universities, 
and some companies with suitable qualifications. They give assignments to catch a certain species and send information about its whereabouts. Jiang Yu said that if they tell his location, because it's very convenient, and told the guy to share his code with him. Jiang Yu said that when he returned home he would add it. In addition, he would give 7,000 yuan for a different one. The guy said that 900 gray thousand nine hundred was enough for him. Jiang Yu said, how can it be? He can't be so petty. In addition, Jiang Yu said he wanted to chat with the guy about further cooperation. What kind of cooperation did the guy ask about? After finding another other one called the blood cat, Jiang Yu decided to kill it. He used the shadow bite attack. Jiang Yu said that he would try to swallow him, but leave the body intact. Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to sell it. Jian Yu, after killing that cat, told the guy that he can take him away. The guy said that Yu is so kind, even willing to share. Jian Yu told the guy that he also had a responsible job. He still had to find out the location and take the body to the night watch. The guy said you can actually do the job alone if you register. Jian Yu said he wanted to keep his identity confidential. What happens if the night watch people find out his identity? The guy said that brother Yu is very good killing four other people in one day. It's a record. Jian Yu said that he can kill a hundred if he has the time, but the others he just absorbed didn't make him stronger. He thinks the ones with the first rank will go bigger. The guy told Denki to help him find the first ranked others tomorrow. Denki told him it's impossible. They're all extremely dangerous. The risk is too great. Jian Yu looked at Denka and said that he knew about it, but he was going to deal with them anyway. When he got home, the guy said he was finally back. And then Lu told him he was late again. Lu said she'd been waiting for him for a long time. And there were cookies on the table that she'd baked herself, so she offered the guy a taste. The guy asked her where Uncle Lu was. Yao said he was on a mission. Will he be back today? The guy asked. Lu said no and asked what was wrong. The guy said she could stay at his place tonight. Lu said that she didn't have a chance to ask Jian Yu during the day. How did his testing go? The guy said he was successful and asked what was wrong. Lu asked him what level? The guy said he thinks it's level 3. But it's actually gold. But he shouldn't tell her. Lu asked him, what about his powers? What kind of powers does he have? The guy said he had shadow powers. She must have heard of such a thing. Lu said it's very good and not bad. He's got good potential, an auxiliary ability, so he shouldn't get in the way. The guy wondered if she was worried about him. That's why she waited so long. But he asked, What about her abilities? Lu said she has a spirit ability. It's rated as the strongest with the highest potential. In the early stage, the combat power isn't very strong, but in the late stage, it's a different matter. The guy realized that she just came to show off. The guy told her to keep her mouth shut. Lu slapped him and told him to shut up. The guy said they're Shadow Man and Soul Keeper now? Lu said she doesn't understand. She only knows that other people have the same title. For example, his shadow corresponds to the shadow of another, and her soul guardian corresponds to the spirit of another. Lu said that they needed to hunt others but not be polluted to become stronger. If they hunted the right other, the efficiency of their development would increase. The guy told Lu that it's interesting. Her skill sounds good too. Why not show off her skills? Lu said that there are no others. The guy told her she could try it out on him and not to worry, it'd be fine. Lu got mad and said he was suggesting it. Lu decided to use her powers on Jian Yu and hurt him. She asked if he was okay. Jian Yu told her to quickly stroke his head. Lu, without any thoughts, started stroking it. The guy told her to try both sides and to stroke him more gently. Lu obeyed his instructions unhesitatingly. The guy said she was very strong. He was ready to defend himself but he was still trapped. Lu said that their abilities came from different other. It was normal that he couldn't resist. Moreover, the spirit attacked sharply. No wonder he didn't even notice Jiang Yu. The guy said, did she think she would be a target for everyone while they were at the training camp? Lu said she wasn't like him. She liked assertiveness. She heard there would be other strong students from the district there. The guy asked what their levels were going to be. Lu told him not to worry. They weren't going to be much stronger. Lu said the guy likes massages. I wonder how much he'd pay a masseuse. The guy said he couldn't even imagine. Maybe a few thousand. Lu said if he liked the massage so much, she'd do it. So she used force. The guy yelled at her to stay back and called for help. That night, the guy and his friend found another rank one. 
Denki said yes, he specifically chose one he had already encountered. Deek asked Jian Yu if he needed help. But the guy said to just watch. After destroying a rank one other, Deek was very surprised and said that brother Yu was very strong. Lu watched a blogger's broadcast who fought the others and said that this battle looks very powerful. Lu's father told her that not all special people can awaken the ability she has. That's very impressive. There was a person who had already awakened a similar ability to hers before. The recording on the flash drive was an early stage of his cultivation. It was worth paying special attention to. Lu asked her father if he'd ever achieved such a thing. Father said yes, but Uncle Lee had. He knows the generals, he knows them well. Lu thought it was very strange. Wouldn't this information be useful to Jiang Yu? Why would her father show it to her? While Uncle Lee was in the secret room, he said the cataclysm happened 90 years ago, west of Beido. 200 kilometers from here. The body was found to be a glowing ring that hung in the air. If you don't look at it for a long time, you start to sink into the pollution. Powerfulness, the ability to will, the possession of other cognition. Immune to most illegal substances and the abilities of others. Two divisions were completely destroyed during the battle. Three generals were seriously wounded. 300 men of the Night Watch were injured. They were successfully taken away and then began to be held in custody. Everyone's file is top secret. After careful analysis, it was found that prolonged contact with that creature was not worth having. The code name of that creature is God, while Jian Yu was exterminating the others. But a bunch of attacks were futile and each time he tried to find an approach to this other. Deke decided that this battle should be broadcast and gave Brother Yu a good luck berth. But the guy's blood kept decreasing. But he had devised a special trap for him and after pulling out his wand he waited for the moment of explosion of the other. And it happened. Menu told him that the shadow group would make small explosions in a certain area either in the air or on the enemy's body. There is a chance to penetrate deep into the enemy's body. Then the damage would be enormous. Deke said that Brother Eu is very good. He thinks that this part of the video will make a splash. Jian Yu said that it was filmed very well. When he opened the menu and saw the characterization, he said that it was very good, because now he didn't have to worry about the training camp. Jian Yu told Dinka to prepare the next one for him. The guy said that it's already done. But suddenly, they were attacked stealthily. Jian Yu asked who did it. Let him come out immediately. Denki said it was an eyeball, and it was rank two. The boy assumed it was a spirit. He remembered Lu's fame for saying that her sole guardian matched the spirit of the other. But the guy moved into the battle and said that the other couldn't be allowed to attack them. But in the moment of attack, something from above let an arrow at the other. From Jian Yu's reaction, he recognized it. He grabbed a piece of paper from the sky and read it. It said that Chu Yang's group was inviting him to join them. When he stood in front of Chu Yang's office, he hesitated. But there was a guy next to him and said that Chu Yang was the largest pharmaceutical company in Yunhai. The guy said that if Jian Yu becomes their employee, there is nothing else to worry about. The future is secured. Jian Yu thought it was Chu Yang's employee. The guy said yes, because it was obvious from his uniform. Jian Yu told him that he had said that people like him were at the first rank, and this one didn't bother to deal with a second ranked other. The guy said, Didn't Jian Yu know? Chu Yang are making doping drugs that increase their abilities. They cooperate with the Night Watch, helped in developing a remedy. If Jian Yu wants to become stronger in the shortest time possible, Chu Yan is the best solution. Jian Yu asked, What about the guy? The guy smiled wryly and told him to forget it, because he was on his own. Chu Yang Company introduced a new drug codenamed T1928, which was developed by Dr. Beto and Mr. Triple X who headed the company for 10 years. This drug helps to increase brain activity, thereby accelerating the development of abilities. Jian Yu said that it sounds tempting, but does it really work? The girl said she was now asking for one of the volunteers to come out. Suddenly the guy jumped up and said he was going. When Jian Yu saw this guy, he was angry because he said he was on his own. And now he's on stage. But suddenly a bright light began to come out of his eyes, he said he began to feel his brain kicking in. The girl said that the original price is 8,000 yuan, but today they have a special offer that reduces the price to 1,888 yuan. Jian Yu said that there was no way to help them after hearing such an offer. When he came out of the performance room, he saw the painting. After reading it, he realized that Chu Yan was a night watchman. The unfamiliar guy said that Jian Yu was correct, but unfortunately, not many people remembered it now. Looking at the guy, 
Jiang Yu realized that he was the man from the night watch. The guy said that in the fiftieth year of the disaster, the others had completely infiltrated Dejo.mr. Zhao single-handedly decided to fight this seemingly hopeless situation and led a mass evacuation from the invaded territory. In order to protect the people, he did not hesitate to set himself on fire to destroy all others, and in the end he burned to the ground, leaving no bones behind. Fortunately, said the guy, his descendants have increased the number of Chuyan Company, continuing to make great contributions to the cause. Honestly, said the guy said that Jiang Yu was very similar to Mr. Zhao Chuyan. Hearing this, Jiang Yu was very surprised. The guy said that on that day in the night watch department, Jiang Yu said that you want to be the only light in the darkness, remember? Jiang Yu laughed and said that he had said such a thing, but in fact, he had just said it, and the guy believed it. The guy said yes, just being a relative of General Li is enough. Jiang Yu asked, who is General Li? The guy said that General Li was Li Xiuenguang. Jian Yu was surprised that his uncle was also the strongest general. The guy asked Jian Yu, didn't Li tell him? Jian Yu said that he thought that uncle was a simple worker. The guy said that he was also a representative of the citizens, but his power was much higher than theirs. Jian Yu now realized that his words about another way out didn't seem strange to him. Jian Yu thought that he knew some cool people. Turns out, it was him. The guy said that General Li seems to be spying on Jian Yu for his own good and said that his name is Sun, and he is an instructor at the training camp. Sun wished Jian Yu good luck and said that he liked him and hoped that their training would go smoothly. Jian Yu thought about the word training and felt some bad feeling, looking at the picture once more, and a terrifying creature jumped out from him. The guy said it's a wandering spirit, but how did he get in when there's so many guards outside? He noticed that the spirit is not so simple. The wandering spirit he killed the first time also popped up this clue. So there's something wrong. He wondered if the increase in the appearance of others in their world had something to do with it. When he saw the basement of Chien's company, he wondered why there was no one here. He heard someone say that number nine was back. Let him come in. Jian Yu asked, is there someone here? Jian Yu thought, maybe he should hide in the shadow layer. And what was wrong with this company in general? Using the shadow pupil he saw something unreal. It was the others who were immersed in the capsules. He wondered what Chuyan was doing with them. The doctor's assistant told him that the wandering spirit's cultivation was going as normal. In the morning, Mr. Zhao said that he would like to take control of the blood species. He asked if he had any ideas. The doctor said that after all, the others are quite difficult to tame, the three wandering spirits being a perfect example. If the blood species are forcibly captured, he fears they will lose many. The assistant said, Hasn't the previous use of flesh and blood to attract the bloody species paid off? The doctor said, No, you can't rely on that completely. The doctor said that their ultimate goal was to develop a controllable alien to help the Night Watch. And to achieve that, they first had to control the spirit. And so the spirit was in their hands after being rejected by their own. The doctor approached capsule number 9. The assistant told him to be careful. But the doctor told him not to worry and just take notes. The doctor asked him how he felt and if he liked his new eyes. The doctor told him with gestures. The doctor told the alien that his mood is stabilizing. The next step is to make more ninth numbers that can fight the aliens. The doctor told the assistant to quickly fetch some stones and give them to number nine. The assistant quickly went to carry it out. The guy said that this other sees him and he is not like the wandering spirits he has encountered before. He is not aggressive and communicates. He seems to have consciousness. The assistant asked the doctor, If things continue like this, won't the others get out of control? Won't they fight against them? The doctor looked at the assistant and said that he believed they would solve all the problems. The deputy said maybe they could try further testing, like replacing the alien soul with a human one. The doctor told him not to talk nonsense, because it's out of bounds. He told Tianming to give up or he wouldn't live. Tianming apologized and said that he had said too much and told the doctor not to worry so much. The doctor said he couldn't even think of such a thing, and suddenly he started coughing up blood. The doctor said it was Tianming's fault. The assistant said that this is the end of the doctor's research. After all, he came for another. Tianming used his strength to break the capsule and let the aliens out. A siren began to warn people that the escape of aliens from the capsule was 35, and the threat level was red. A siren warned the explorers to evacuate as soon as possible. People realized they were in danger, 
and quickly went into hiding. But Tianming's power was very strong and by using it, he prevented people from running away and hiding he others. Jiang Yu said that the student killed the teacher and then committed suicide. What's going on here? The guy said all the wandering spirits had escaped. The doctor saw the guy and said he'd been waiting for him. But the guy told him not to move, he will call a doctor. The doctor only said that the guy is a fiery kind and died in Jiang Yu's arms. The kid asked him what it meant. Let him explain it to him and told the doctor not to play games with him. But suddenly he felt that someone was breathing behind his back. When he turned around he saw the other, and said that first he had to remove all the interference. And first he would kill the other and then continue the conversation. When he started to fight the others, his friends came to his aid. But suddenly they disappeared and the guy said that things were bad, the others had gone to the outside world. But no one expected it, and the people at the conference heard nothing. The girl offered the guys to buy the remedy, but did not have time and they landed on top of her. The guy shouted to everyone that it's a bloody species and they shouldn't worry. They don't just attack. And let everyone stick together. The guy thought they were all good and didn't notice another one trying to attack and kill him from behind. But Jiang Yu was there. The guy said that brother Yu had come. Jiang Yu told him that they would continue talking later, let him help people now. The guy said that there was no way out and everyone was panicking. But Jian Yu didn't give up hope and saved all the people who were calling for help. Jian Yu got angry and told everyone not to fool around. If they didn't want to die, then let them dodge. And told them to pay attention to the shadows around them, and let them not give others a chance to capture them. Yu told them to obey him, and they'll stick together. Have everyone look around. If you notice anything, let them know. And don't worry. Women and children are the first to leave the headquarters. Jiang Yu heard the cries for help. He told the people that everything was fine and he would go on, and told Dunka to help them out while he looked up. The mother and the girl were crying for help. They were so covered in flames that their skin was burning and they were screaming in pain. When they saw the silhouette in the door, they hoped to be saved, but it was another who wanted to kill them. But then Jiang Yu came up and threw that other man into the flames and killed him. The girl thanked the guy for saving them. Jiang Yu started dancing in front of them, and he was very hot. His body is fireproof. Why is he so hot? He thought. Jiang Yu told people not to be afraid. He will help them. The girl started crying when she saw him and said that he was even scarier than that monster. The girl's mom said that he was special and had come to help them, even though he was a little ugly. Grabbing the child and the mother he told them to hold on and pulling them to the roof he lowered them to the ground and rescued them. The mother thanked the boy for saving them, and the little girl too. But people started shouting that Yu's brother had saved the mother and daughter. He heard a lot of nice words, but he had to hurry up, because the shadow points are very quickly used up. He does not know where the other people from the night watch are, but he thinks they will come soon. When he went upstairs, he said that the men from the night watch were already here. Was it really planned this time? The same guy from the Night's Watch tried to fight a herd of aliens himself. And he went to great lengths to do it. But the others would not end and the Night Watch tried to stop them. But each time the others kept destroying their city. Jian Yu said that Chuyang's industrial area seems to be the main target for attack by others. Once inside, Jian Yu said that the situation was not good, the people from the Night Watch were not here. He could only rely on himself this time. The guy tried every time to pull people out of the rubble and rescue them. People outside were all shouting how good and brave he was. Night watch guy turned around and said it was him again. The mystery killer. The guy realized that he was tired and it was hard to be a hero. He wished he could dress up to look better, but he didn't even have the strength to stand up. But it was worth it though, to see the people around him that he saved. It was a big win for him. People started crying and asking each other if they'd seen their kids. The guy hearing this realized that the only ones missing were the kids. He looked up and saw a girl who was crying and begging to go home. The guy said, What are other people thinking? And why do they need kids? But then his phone rang. It was Lu who asked him if he was in Chuyin's company. The guy asked how she knew that. But Lu told him not to ask and just go home. Jiang Yu told her not to worry. He would come back when she finished making beef and tomato salad and egg soup. The guy said that the volume of blood and shadow points is not much. He needs to hurry up a lot. Father Lu, along with the watch, said that according to Law 113, non-members of the night watch are forbidden to use their abilities in public. 
Let them all stop or they will take action. Pointing the gun at Jiang Yu, the night watchman said his last warning, immediately deactivate his abilities. The guy raised his hands and said he understood that I in his head he told himself to forget. It's better to leave everything to the night watch. They are more qualified, so they can help. But he saw the grandmother pointing at her granddaughter and sobbing, and he couldn't stop himself from helping them. Jiang Yu told the night watch to follow him. Captain Lu said that there was no need to do anything as long as they just observe. Finding an army of others, the guy would sneak up behind them and wonder where they were all going and why they wanted children. When he saw the hole in the shadow layer, he realized where they were all going and how they were moving there with the children. The guy did not wait and moved with them. Watching them, he said that it is dangerous. If they used to kill people, now they started to kidnap children and they act in an organized manner, going over all the moments of Chiang's company, the fiery species, the biological experiments. And he thinks he's in for something terrible, but the guy said it was too late to retreat. And with the stone, he tried to distract the others. With every stone he threw, he snatched children from the hands of others. Suddenly, another said that there were far fewer children, but at that moment, they saw Jiang Yu saving the kids. The guy said he was burned and at that moment they attacked him. But the guy used his net and stopped them for a while, while he dragged all the kids out of there, and told them to follow him faster. Taking his phone he decided to call the night watch, but without saying a word his phone exploded in his hands. He looked around and saw a familiar face. The stranger said he thought he'd meet a man from the night's watch. But this guy is a celebrity, brother Yu. Jian Yu asked the stranger who he was? Launching an attack towards Jiang Yu, he told him to guess. Jiang Yu said that this guy also reads minds and maybe he is special and strong too. A stranger attacked him from behind and told him it was just like the video. The reaction is impressive. The stranger said that the guy's durability is only at level 1 and it doesn't surprise him. Jiang Yu asked him, is he from Chuyen? Sticking out his tongue the stranger asked, does he think he looks alike? Jiang Yu said maybe he's of the fire kind. The stranger used force to say that the dead don't need to know much. After all, he's going to die anyway. With every attack, the stranger bullied Jiang Yu. The guy couldn't do anything about it and tolerated it. The stranger destroying the guy with every attack said he was bored. He thought it would be more fun. While the children stayed in the house and watched the fight, they begged Yu's brother just not to die. After walking through the smoke, the stranger decided to finally finish off Jiang Yu, but he didn't see him and asked where he was. The guy didn't hesitate to use his shadow abilities and tried to attack him from behind, but the stranger was fast and attacked back. Jiang Yu thought that it would be better if the stranger couldn't see him, so he would have a better chance of winning. The stranger got angry and said that the guy was hiding in the shadows and attacking him sneakily. How weak is that? The stranger gathered his strength and said that he would show Jiang Yu some more. He launched an attack at the child. When the girl saw this, she shouted for help, and Jiang Yu appeared and attacked him back. But he didn't think the stranger would catch him so fast. He sneaks up behind him and tasered the guy. Jiang Yu fell to the ground bleeding. He realized that his strength was already at its limit, but he had to fight. The stranger asked him, did he think he could hide in the shadows? In fact, he didn't stand a chance. The stranger didn't hesitate long enough to finally get rid of the guy and delivered a devastating blow. The guy didn't realize what was happening because his shadow form was starting to collapse. The shadow didn't cover his entire body, so he couldn't use his skills. The stranger put his hand on the boy's head and slowly hid his shadow, and said it was time to see who he was. But suddenly before the big event, the guys started throwing stones at him, and asked him to let Jiang Yu go. The stranger got angry and tried to attack the kids. But the guy couldn't let that happen and hugged him and said that he was his opponent. After thanking the guys, he used the shadow pupil and dragged the stranger underground. But the opponent's strength was much better and he pushed Jian Yu. The stranger called the guy a stalker and asked if he thought he could stop him by dragging him into the shadow layer. The stranger would kill him and the kid wouldn't help him anymore. Jian Yu told him that his blood was finally under control. But why would he kidnap children? The stranger said that it's natural because children's souls are pure. Jiang Yu should listen to his own kind. The guy remembered the situation in Qian's lab and realized who it was. The stranger said since he had satisfied his curiosity, then he would die now. But at the same moment he was attacked by others. 
but the guide did not let his guard down and said that he would die only after them. Applying the new ability to others, the boy thanked the stranger for his gift. The stranger was surprised that the guy could absorb the others. The stranger tried to stop him, but he failed. The stranger didn't like it and said he had to use the blood. The stranger said it's too dangerous for him to be here. The special ones are too cunning. This is the first time he's seen the others being consumed. The stranger stopped and thought that if the guy could absorb others, then he was different too. The stranger ran out into the street and froze while the guy was slaying the others and when he was done with them he said it was the stranger's turn. Descending to the ground, the guy said that it was only the second rank, but it already felt as if he had gotten rid of all the bad things and let them out. Heaven and earth said the guy that is very clearly visible. Everything takes on new colors. Even human fears felt very clearly. The guy told the stranger to let him play with him. The stranger said that if the guy ducked into the shadows, this time he was completely gone. But the stranger was not going to give up and was ready to take the fight. But he only saw his kind being slaughtered before his eyes. The guy managed to leave a mark on him too. The stranger said he can't see the guy's attacks, he's too fast. The stranger wondered what kind of monster this guy was and how a second-ranked person could be so strong. Standing in front of the stranger, the guy said that the enemy can't see anything. After all, he has everything written all over his face. Now he can hide in the deeper shadows. After cutting the stranger from different sides, the enemy said that he was a bastard. Xiang Yu laughed and said how much fun he was having playing with his prey. The stranger told the guy to kill him already and stop bullying him. He called him over to him and the guy attacked from behind with his sword through his throat. But suddenly a rock was thrown at him, and the guy wasn't expecting that. When he looked he saw a tile flying with power. Someone asked the stranger what the hell he was doing and called him Su Shan. They'd been waiting for him for half a day, and the boss is very angry with him. Su asked Zhao the head sent him here? Zhao said that the implementation of the plan begins our. Let Su take the children and he will deal with everything here. Su went to get the kids and said he'd leave the sick one to him. But then a guy showed up and told him not to touch the kids. But this Zhao interfered again and threw a stone at him and ruined his attack. The guy got very angry and proceeded to fight him. But Su used his powers when the guy tried to escape and got trapped. Zhao was hitting the ground, but he didn't know the guy wasn't there anymore. How he got behind Su and killed him. Zhao said the guy's skills are very good. He asked him if he was on the night watch. And why is he meddling in other people's business? The guy said it's nonsense. They use children to experiment on others. How can he not intervene on something like that? Zhao asked the guy if he had decided to become a hero. Jiang Yu said that he was not a hero and never wanted to become one. Jiang Yu said he's sticking to what he thinks is right, that's all. Right? Zhao asked and laughed. Zhao said if the guy saves the kids... All of humanity will be wiped out. Is that what he thinks is right? Jiang Yu asked him what he was talking about. He means kidnapping children to save the world? What kind of joke is this? Zhao said the guy knows that the war between humans and aliens has been going on for hundreds of years, and it's only because of their efforts that they are still alive. Nevertheless, the others are still much stronger than them. Human strength is like fire which is simply unable to illuminate everything around it. Instead of dying a painful death, they found another way out, said Zhao. Since the darkness is invincible, we must adapt to it. Bury your hopes deep in your heart, and just wait for the fire to finally start that will save all of humanity. The guy said that he thought Zhao was only justifying his actions. If the fire species thinks the same way, then Jian Yu will destroy everyone. Zhao said it's useless to talk to the guy. Then let him see the power of the fire form. The guy used his sword attack, but Zhao easily defended against it and threw his own strike. After transforming into a multi-armed monster, he told the guy to attack, but Jiang Yu wasn't scared and attacked him. After putting Jiang Yu against the wall, Zhao sighed. He realized that his enemy was very strong, and he should come up with a plan. Looking at his chest, the guy said that his wound was not healing and did not understand what had happened. Zhao walked over to him and said that it was a special skill called Flame Strike. The guy was surprised to hear the skill special. Zhao had told him that he couldn't even overpower him, what would happen to him in other circumstances. Gathering all the energy in one hand, Zhao said that in the face of absolute power, he was helpless. That's it, that's the end. Jiang Yu said that he was right and smiled as he applied a tag attack. Zhao had fallen into a big trap. Zhao asked how this was possible, 
and how he was here. He started crying and begged for help, because he didn't want to die. The guy asked him if he could see it. This is the fear lurking deep in his heart. Saving humanity is only a suggestion, but fear is the real reason for his actions. The guy said they're all like that in fire form, just a bunch of thugs. Zhao got angry and tried to attack the guy by telling him to shut his mouth. But his last words were, this enemy is only a kid. Zhao said that he wasn't surprised by this, because he is so fearless. He was once so energetic too, but his ignorance and fearlessness have long since dissipated. Eventually the guy will meet the same fate that we just have to wait. On the same day, the television did not remain silent and said that they could see the Chuyang building behind her. Just an hour ago, a fire broke out in the building and several others escaped. The building is completely charred. There are traces of a battle between the specials and the others. The girl said she was saved by her brother Yu. It became known that many victims were saved thanks to the streamer with the nickname Yu. After learning that several children were kidnapped at the scene, he immediately rushed to search for them. There's no news, so they can only pray that the children will return safely. But suddenly a boy shouted that Brother Eu had returned. All the people who had lost their children gathered in a circle to see if Brother Eu was their savior. Jiang Yu told the children to go home, because he wouldn't go any further. The children all hugged him and thanked him, while the children quickly all ran to their parents and were very happy. Nightwatch gave honor to the guy for saving the children. Jiang Yu didn't stay there for long and went to his home. When he opened the door, he saw Lu sitting on the couch. Lu was very sad and worried. Jiang Yu took out some eggs from his bag and showed her with a smile. The guy apologized for coming in so late. He decided to run to the store for eggs, but something happened on the way, so he was late. Lu was silent and started crying, saying that the guy was lying again, like a child deceiving. The guy said, what's the matter? Did she think he was dead? Lu got on her knees and told him to die and tried to hit him. The guy grabbed her arm and wouldn't let go. Lu asked him to let go of her hand, but the guy picked it up and said he wouldn't let go. The guy asked if she had tried it yet. Lu blushed and asked what she hadn't tried. The guy told her not to be afraid, because they weren't kids anymore. Lu asked him again that she hadn't tried it. Jiang Yu said he hadn't either. But then Lu got angry and said to speak more clearly what he wanted. But then the guy kissed her on the lips. At first Lu liked it. But then she pushed him away and asked him what he was doing. Jiang Yu said he was just thirsty and was looking for something to drink. Lu was very embarrassed and asked, to drink? The guy asked her if she'd eaten. The guy said he was just on the verge of life and death. The guy said his stomach felt so hot when he kissed her, he thought Yao would kill him. He said thoughtfully how soft her lips were. And that was as a reward for the battle. The guys sat down at the table and only glanced at each other, wondering how much his abilities had increased after the battle. But suddenly he looked up at Lu and looked so strange. Lu asked him what he was looking at and warned him not to do anything strange again. But the guy saw Lu start to glow and couldn't figure out what it was. He wondered what the pink color meant. The guy realized that their pink was a sign that sweet girl Lu loved him very much. Lu said the guy was very strange. Suddenly they heard gunfire and went out on the balcony and saw that it was fireworks. The guy asked Lu if she knew anything about the fire form. Lu was surprised and asked where he had heard about it. The guy asked her if she knew. Lu said, of course, there are mentions of the fire species in Daddy's information. They are a group that acts on its own, pursuing only its own goals, an organization that betrayed humanity for their own agenda. They brainwash people so it's best not to mess with them. Lu said if a guy finds a fiery-looking dick, he should go to the night watch 500,000 yuan. When he heard the price, the guy was surprised. Lu asked him what's wrong. But the guy said nothing, because he was out a million dollars. The guy asked, besides the fire kind, are there any other strange organizations? And what's the reward for them? Lu said there aren't and asked the guy if he thought there were. The guy said he was just thinking about what he could make money off of. Lu said there are awards for other organizations too, but not as much as for enlightenment. The guy asked what other enlightenment. Lu said it's a controversial organization, like an ally, but fundamentally different from them. They believe humanity will fail and are looking for a way to escape. For example, said Lu, move to another planet. Like some sci-fi movie, doesn't he think so? She asked Jiang Yu. Spaceships can't be built for everyone. 
You don't have to rely on technology. The others told Lu that they live in a different world where there is no technology. But they are eager to get through the cracks and into our world. And if enlightenment achieves the same results as others, it will not be easy to stop the wheel that has taken hold. The days pass quietly, flying by one after another, the holidays gradually passed by. They went to work, others to study. Since the guy had risen to the second rank, he could safely exterminate first-level others without any difficulty. And sometimes it can still increase your life expectancy by three days in just some twenty-four hours. All the tests are over, so it's time to go to the training camp. Puliak has already gone there, and the guy is the last one left, and leaves tomorrow. Also, the night before the detour, Uncle Lee came back. He said he heard the guy's powers had been discovered. They're recruiting for night watch groups. Turns out the guy's a badass. The boy asked Uncle Lee, wasn't he in Beto, and what else is wrong with his hand? Lee said that this year's workload is heavy, there's no time at all. Headley told the guy, there was something else added to the addition of his golden light. The guy asked, and what was supposed to be added? Chief Lee said, who knows, we'll see for sure someday. And your power will come out. The key is to keep it in check. Chiefly said that it was not surprising that Jiang Yu seemed unusual to him earlier. Lu thought that he would fail the tests, but he performed well, even reaching the sixth level. Jiang Yu said that he recently met a man named Sunday. He said that Li is a general. Is it true? Li thought for a long time what to answer and bowed his head and said that he was a general and Sun was right. The boy was surprised and said that it was true that his uncle was one of the five strongest. Li said, to be precise, it's already in the past. He was in his early forties when he left the front line. At that time, he was full of energy. Lee fought countless enemies. Back then, his goals were quite simple to exterminate all others for the sake of everyone's safety. But there were too many of them, and it took more than twenty years. Eventually his wife died of contamination, and he had to change his activities, and the once invincible general became a cripple. This time, Beto had some pretty strong others. Suddenly, a guy stopped him and asked, Does he think that Jiang Yu can handle it and will retreat? That's never going to happen. Jiang Yu said that he also wanted to become a general, just like his uncle Li. The general said that he had already been noticed and there was no turning back. Li gave him a pendant and told him to hang it on his body. The guy seeing this gold pendant was surprised. The guy asked, What is it? A pendant? Li said it's a secret in shadow thing. After you put it on, you'll hear a lot more different sounds. If he wears it for a long time, his willpower will be greatly strengthened and will help him in training. But negative emotions are also strengthened, so let him wear the pendant at intervals of three days. In addition, it can be activated when unusual energy is detected, releasing the contaminated energy. The combat power will increase significantly in a very short period of time but it can only be used once. The guy said contaminated energy is a shadow layer birthing thing? We said the guy's not even bad, and that's where it came from. Such forbidden things come from another world, and a certain fee is charged for their use. The cost of using it will only depend on his willpower and skill. If his strength is above level 5, he can wear it safely. And the most amazing thing Lee said was that he recognizes people. The guy put the pendant on and said he was curious and had to try it. Lee asked him what he felt. The guy said it was weird. There didn't seem to be any sounds. Lee said it looks like the guy's willpower is resisting the effects of the suspension, and he can be calm now. Lee said we'll see more later and he'll come back a little later. Jian Yu went to sleep and suddenly the pendant began to spread through his body and transported the guy to another world. The guy opened his eyes and didn't realize where he was and there was only some road in front of him. When he opened his eyes, he saw balloons with people in them saying something. But he realized that they were probably memories from the pendant. The next day, Jian Yu and Lu were on their way to the training camp. But suddenly Lu started yawning very widely. The guy asked her if she'd gotten any sleep. Lu said she'd been up all night excited. Lu asked, did the guy sleep? Jian Yu smiled and said that he slept soundly and had wonderful dreams. In his head, the guy knew that he couldn't remember last night's dream. Shadow pendant, he thought he heard her speak. The guy told Lu if she was tired, she could go to bed and rest. Lu said no, no way. The guy told her not to worry because he wasn't going to do anything. Lu's father told Yao that there are quite a lot of bad people in the training camp, so he should be more serious. Lu said she understood. 
while the guy realized that by calling them bad people, he was alluding to him. Lu's commander said that when they get there, they should follow the instructor's instructions that if anything happens, they should call him. Lu told her father that he was talking about it all the way. Jian Yu told his uncle not to worry about it, because he's here, so everything will be fine. But Lu's father realized that it was because of the guy that he was worried. Arriving at the camp, Lu said they were going. But her father reminded her not to forget her phone. Seeing them holding hands, Lu's father freaked out. Lu quickly let go of the boy's hand and said to him, Is he going to die? Her father is watching her. The guy said it's no big deal. They've always been together. It's no big deal. And her dad has nothing to worry about. Lu told the guy to calm down. Lu said that the train was coming, and we should get in. He was glad to get on the train, because it was the train that would take him straight to the training camp. The driver told the students to pay attention to the carriage heading from Beto to the special training camp, moving non-stop at medium speed, the estimated time of stay in 20 minutes. The guy said there's so many people here. Lu said there's people from all over the place. Everyone in the train car has pretty high test scores. Either they have a high level of willpower or outstanding abilities. They only need training to easily deal with first-ranked others. The guy said he's so strong. Now he doesn't have to fear the coming of the others. With his current strength, he can even handle the second rank. Lu told him not to think about it so nonchalantly. Training is not easy, just let him wait. When they get to camp, he'll get a taste of real suffering. The guy said he doesn't care and he's sure he won't have a problem with it. Arriving at the camp, the guy fell asleep and Lu tried to wake him up. The guy opened his eyes and asked what was wrong. Lu said to the guy, didn't they say the trip would take about twenty minutes, and they're already on the road like forty, and they're still going. The guy said that it's very strange, it shouldn't be like that. Looking out the window the guy asked, why is it foggy outside? But one of the guys said that this fog is not easy. Lu asked, weren't they supposed to be met? The boys were all silent, and only one said he didn't know. Jian Yu pulled everyone back and went into the fog. Lu asked him what he was up to, and told him to go back. When he opened the door, he saw blood on the floor, which was scattered all over the road. The guy said he wasn't doing anything, but his look changed a lot. The guy ran his finger on the ground and said it was blood. The guys started asking if someone had been killed in the training camp. The guy said it can't be. Aren't there supposed to be teachers there? How could this ever happen? Jiang Yu said that the others did it. He told everyone to notify the night watch to go back as soon as possible. Lu asked what about him. The guy said he was going to the bathroom. Lu couldn't help herself and ran after him. The guy said they really had to go back. He took out his phone and said there was no signal and nothing could be sent. Jiang Yu went to the toilet and after peeing, he said that he was finally relieved, but suddenly another appeared in front of him and attacked him. When he came out of the bathroom, he saw Lu and asked if she was in the bathroom too. Lu said she was with him, but he didn't realize how dangerous it could be. The guy told her to calm down and listen to him. Lu said she was listening and wanted to see what he could come up with. The guy smiled and said that the training had actually already started and they needed to go through it. Lu asked the guy when practice started? The guy said as soon as they got off the wagon it started. Lu asked the guy if he thought it was planned? The guy said yes and asked her what she thought about the other one that just blew up. Lu said he's very weak. She would say he's extremely weak. Of course, someone so weak wouldn't have the courage to attack a training camp. The guy said she's right and she's not stupid. Lu told him he's a fool, knows they're in a bad situation. The guy said, if they had actually raided the place, he thinks the night watch would have known immediately. And wouldn't they have been notified if something happened? The guy said they intentionally extended their time in the subway car to scare them. Use thick fog to recreate the atmosphere of fear. And blood to make it look even worse. Fog said the guy is an endurance test. Under that kind of pressure, the weak and the strong really stand out. As for his Jiang Yu, he's the strongest one in that carriage. Lu said she's been hearing it for half a day. The guy saw the others behind him and hid behind Lu, telling her to use her powers. Lu said, isn't the guy here strong? What does he want from her? The guy said in Lu's ear, if he wanted to do something, they wouldn't have a chance. And pushing Lu forward, he said this was a great chance to show off his abilities. While being watched by the camp coaches to see if these guys can do anything or not, Lu was very dignified and defeated the others. The guy was happy and said she was cool, 
defeating all three of them. Lu said how Jiang Yu is not ashamed, he was just standing there. The guy told her not to be angry, because it shows his trust. Lu told Jiang Yu that they need to get out of this hole. The guy thought about it, and saw a map that said the entrance C is a shadow field. Lu said if he was sure, she thought it was some kind of shadow layer imitation. Isn't this the most dangerous place? The guy said that usually the most dangerous place is often the safest. Jiang Yu said that they would go there, and if they got into trouble, he would protect her. But suddenly, some guys ran up from behind and asked for help. The guy tried to stop them, and said that they were elite, but they were scared of the others. Lu looked at the guy very strangely. Lu told Jiang Yu that there was a snake behind him. The guy saw her and moved away from her to get space to attack. The guy said, what's going on is that this other one is rank one. If this thing enters the training camp, it will lead to deaths. But suddenly Lu stood in front of the snake and decided to teach it a lesson. But in the eyes of the snake, she was an enemy and attacked it. But then Jiang Yu came and punched it. Taking Lu's hand, the guy told her to run after him. The ordinary snake turned into a three-headed snake and was much scarier. When he opened the door, he noticed that no one was holding his hand and Yao was gone. The camp chief asked, What's wrong with this snake? Shouldn't its combat power have been suppressed by the crystals? The guy said he didn't know and they lost control of him. The head said that if they can't take control, then the only thing left to do is to go out and harass him. But the coach said not to, let them wait a little longer. Let's leave it as it is. And watch Jian Yu's ability. The guy said there's a problem with the door. The glass is made of a material that lets sunlight through. But there are some differences. The guy said if he opened the door a few more times, he might be able to meet Yao Yao. But as he opened the door, a snake came to meet him. But the guy managed to hold off its attack. And he leaned back sharply. The guy said he almost lost control, but he doesn't think it was very noticeable. But suddenly he started to transform. The guy didn't understand what was wrong, because he hadn't activated the shadow form. Why did it happen by itself? The guy said that this was the upper limit of the first rank, and the situation was escalating. The coaches who saw his transformation were very surprised and did not understand what happened to him. This insidious other was very calm and with a poke of his finger he spread his acid everywhere. The guy said it was very powerful. Jiang Yu saw his attack and attacked the guy, and with a single blow, he tore him to pieces saying that he was an idiot and that such a thing would never happen to him. Applying a shadow bite, the guy took his prey and left only small pieces of the other ones that were scattered everywhere. After opening the snake menu, it was said that there were rumors that the eyes were descendants of a lower-ranked shadow species. And the other faceless one, the main source of ability is pupils, but the amount does not reflect the true power. Good in both ranged and close attacks. The guy thought that the eyes were descended from a shadow species. Maybe the stalker is hostile to the shadow species. Maybe that's why they attack. The guy thought that since it's a test, they'd send someone weaker. But they sent someone who can even kill a man. Jian Yu said that the worst thing is that his shadow form was seen by the instructors. There's no point in hiding anymore. The boy tried to remove the shadow form, but he couldn't. He wondered what was wrong. But another other guy came to him, and the guy said that it seems like this time you can't get rid of the eye look so easily. The people in the headquarters who were watching the students couldn't understand what had happened, because all the screens had gone black. The programmer came in and told the chief that all information systems were down. In addition, communication with instructors Lu and Luo had been lost. The elder said that he did not think that the Yuhai training camp would be in such a mess. He asked them if they considered themselves worthy instructors. The coach apologized to Head Chan and asked what they should do in such a case. The elder got angry and loudly hit the ground with his stick. Head Chan told Xiao, Count everyone who entered the shadow field. Remove the fog. The evaluation should be suspended. Send people to maintain order. Chin told them to choose second and third rank instructors and go to the shadow field with them. Chin told instructor son to stay late. He is the calmest of all. Have him tell him that he is in the shadow field of Yahai camp. Sun said that the head had already discovered something long ago, and that was why he had sent the second and third rank instructors. Chin said that as soon as the students went into the shadow field, there was some kind of anomaly. Even the naked eye could see the problem. In that case, Sun said he wouldn't lie. The shadow field was caused by a forbidden place in Shenzhou. In direct contact with others on the body, 
eyeballs begin to sprout until they cover the entire body. After the other moved into this world, he began to change it to his own rules, imposing a translucent veil. Under normal circumstances, he would only lead the lower species that would not exceed the first rank. But it also happens that others sometimes suppress their true power, which makes it harder to fight. Chin asked, what is the rank of this other? Song said that he believed that this other had been in a viable state for about half a month. Chin said that in that case, only a fourth-ranked person could match him in strength. Sun said yes, but if you don't take the initiative, it will be fine. Even if a person below the third rank enters the shadow field, nothing will happen. But if it's rank four, chaos will reign. The others will continue to evolve and mutate. Chin asked the guy, were there any fourth-rank special students among the students? Sun said that the probability was extremely small, but it was not impossible. Sun said that no matter whether it was rank four or not, something had affected the others. And I'm afraid for Jian Yu, it's the end. Jian Yu tried to attack them and run away, but he saw that they wouldn't get away from him. He called them breaks, because they couldn't catch up with him. But when they started attacking him, the guy told them to try it. They choose death. But suddenly, she took out her strength from the others and attacked directly at Jiang Yu's back, causing him to fall down. The guy got angry and realized that these others were capable of such things. They used a long-range attack. The guy said that the first rank was nothing, but then the second rankers came up. And the guy said that they forced him, and now he would show the power of the second rank. And he activated the shadow blade. But he got a message that the shadow blade wouldn't activate. But then he realized that the other one had sealed it. But suddenly the guy found it strange. He began to think why the others do not move, whether they were frightened by his power. But at that moment, they were separated, and the guy was surprised to see another third ranker. But the guy had no choice but to fight him. But he couldn't handle his attack. As he got to his feet, the guy got angry, because he can't use the double blade, and everything went out of order. The guy said that in his current state, it was hard to fight even a second ranker, let alone a third ranker. Using his shadow net he said he had no chance of winning, but using the best plan of all he could execute and escape. But the third rank other broke the net and chased after the guy. Jiang Yu turned back and said that the other was very fast. Yaino tried to attack the guy, but Jiang Yu had time to move away and he had the only chance to attack back. Touching him he said that everything was going great. Even though every attack was damaging him, at least the continuous blows were damaging him. Sucking his blood, the guy said he had to accumulate enough kills and then kill this other guy. But everything turned the other way and the guy was attacked with a fist on his face. The other tried to attack him again, but suddenly he stopped. The guy wondered what happened and why he didn't move. But he saw a barrier behind him and said that it was almost the same as the shadow layer. Aren't they too similar? The guy said that, frankly... This place scares him even more than the shadow layer. Jiang Yu said there's no plan to save his ass. But suddenly he stopped too, because he thought it was strange that the alley was so long. His eyesight was obviously failing him, but at that moment he got into some atmosphere. The guy didn't understand what happened and what place he was in. He didn't see or feel anything. The guy said things are bad and his body's out of control. And someone's controlling his body. The guy yelled at him to stop because he owns that body. But suddenly it stopped. But it wasn't all easy. Suddenly a great power began to flow out of him. And he became someone's puppet. But suddenly he found himself in an unusual place, and didn't realize what it was. He assumed it was the border between this world and Shenzhou. At that moment, an unfamiliar voice came to him, and asked him if he could feel this energy, if he wanted to dive into the shadows. The voice said that he and she were of the same origin. But the guy couldn't help himself, and slammed his fist into the wall. The voice asked him what he was doing. The guy asked him what's the big deal. He's just eliminating the other guy, that's all. The voice asked him if it was too early. After all, she hadn't even had a chance to say a word. Could he forgive the key points of his skills, such as martial arts cheats or the master of the depths? The guy told the voice if she had something to say, let her say it quickly. He had to get out of here to save Yao. The guy said that this kind of eye that previously blocked some of his power. The voice said that right, to be more precise. The sparkling vision is also one of Shenzhou's forbidden objects. The voice said that the shimmering species and the shadow species are sworn enemies. Even though the guy is special, he is descended from the shadow species. 
the shimmering species targeted the guy, trying to fence him in and block his techniques. The guy may think he's a dead man. The guy said she's the one who saved him. But why? The voice said it was because she waited for him for a long time. The guy was surprised and asked if he was waiting for him. The voice said he was waiting for someone as strong as him. The voice said that he used to be a high-ranking person in Shenzhou. Courageous and responsible, such people were quite hard to find, especially there. He was supposed to be the head of the group, but due to an accident, his body disintegrated into countless fragments and fell into this world and the sparkling species took and preserved the remains of his soul. But this entity was quite willful, so it turned its back on him. It used his powers to its advantage, strengthening its power, and that's why he's been waiting for a shadow species to appear. Finally, someone stronger than him showed up, and let the guy help him end it all, and then Jian Yu would become his master, and he would obey him and do the guy's errands, no questions asked. Jian Yu couldn't help himself and slapped him. The voice asked him what he was doing. Didn't he agree to help him with the eye look? The guy said. When did he ever give him consent? Jian Yu said that the guy who was left without any last chances had no right to put conditions on him. Besides, did he really say that he would obey him? The voice said. So what? The guy can't escape anyway. In that case, the voice said, only he will serve here. It should be a great honor for him to be its host. Jian Yu grabbed the man by the throat and said that he used to say that he was quite strong, but now his condition couldn't say that. What's more, most of his powers are in the hands of the eye, so the proposed conditions are not so good. The man said that he had a rank six shadow species, so Jian Yu's continued existence in Shenzhou was considered impossible. Jian Yu couldn't stand his words and began to suck his strength out of him. The man couldn't believe it, after all. It was impossible. The voice said, could a simple second-ranked man really be able to take control of him? After sucking everything out of that voice, the guy moved into his world. And he brought back his view of shadows and fragments. Sway told everyone that the instructors guard the outside, the students go inside. They told the students to take the contamination medicine immediately. Lu was fine and protected, but her mind was still wondering where Jian Yu had gone and if he was okay. Lu didn't stay inside but decided to go and help others. Coach Sway thanked her. If it wasn't for her, it would be much harder to fight. Sway said to get everyone in one place. They need to get out of here. But another eye possessed him and knocked him out. Lou stood frozen and didn't know what to do next. The other began to walk towards her. She realized things were bad. But then the teacher came up and ripped the teacher and said that he was third rank. The situation was worse than they thought. Coach told the boys, weren't they told to be vigilant? They were almost sneak attacked. The teacher looked at the students and realized that out of so many students, they were the only ones who had been attacked by a third-ranked other. Was there really a special fourth-ranked one among them? Teacher Sui asked if everyone was here. Lu told them to wait because she was with Jian Yu. But he's not here. The teacher thought, could this guy be together with an IV dot if she came with Jian Yu? They must be in a close relationship. But suddenly he noticed another tried to attack him from behind but he reacted in time and tore him apart. The teacher looked at Lu's eyes and realized that she was also under the attention of the species, and it might be bad. Sway told his subordinates to escort the students. Leave the rest to him. Sway decided to fight the others alone, so as not to put others in danger, and did it very well. But the other used his attack and neutralized Sway. The guy didn't understand what had happened because his ability had disappeared. After seeing the huge eye, he realized what was wrong and who was to blame for his loss of abilities. But he couldn't contain its effect on him. And things were going very badly. Lu squeezed herself into a lump and said it was over. Her body wouldn't move and her consciousness was clouded. Even though she has long been mentally prepared for everything, she still feels powerless when faced with the others. But Jian Yu suddenly appeared and saved her from an agonizing death. Repelling the attack of the other eye, Jian Yu told her that he was here. 